There is a place that is spoken about only in whispers. A dark area that spawns the beginnings of urban legends. A place where anything can happen and usually does. During the light of day it hides just outside of you. But when the sun goes down, spirits, creatures of the night roam free. And things do go bump in the night. It is in every state and every country. And there is no escaping it. No matter how safe you feel behind your locked doors and latched windows. So we invite you to turn down the lights and turn up your radio while we join Dave Schrader and Tim Dennis, your hosts, on a journey into the darkness on the edge of town. Hello and welcome. You're tuned in to the best in paranormal talk radio. This is Darkness Radio. I'm your host, Dave. That's Tim. Tim, before we get started, I want to address something, if I may. Sure. I've had many people reach out to us over the last few weeks with requests for two things. One, people want us to talk about the coverage of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. They want us to discuss the uh, outbreak, the conspiracy behind it, the, um, you know, we, we talked once during the news about the the prediction that was made in Dean Koontz's book. I think we may have even mentioned the prediction that was made in Sylvia Brown's book. Yeah. Predictions, those kind of fall into our genre. But in all honesty, folks, this is what Tim and I want to be for you. We want to be an escape. All right. Every channel, every channel is covering this dreaded disease we're not going to do it even in doing this we're doing it but i I just want to put it out there once and for all we're not going to be covering or talking about it um it's just i want you to come here for 90 minutes to two hours and just enjoy the weirdness have some laughs with your pals and and move forward so that's, I believe, the stance we're going to continue with here on the show. I, do you have anything to say or disagree about that, Tim? Well, I want to add on top of it, there's there's responsibility and irresponsibility. Um, mm-hmm. I think to go too far into conspiracy theory with it is irresponsible at this time. Um, and, you, and you may kind of roll your eyes at that, but but let's face it. There's plenty of people who are putting out misinformation about the virus right now. And there are plenty of people who are saying, oh, it's no worse than the flu, blah, 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 blah. We got to stay on point with things that are factual about about the virus as well. Um, Because let's face it, folks, there are some there are plenty of deadly things about this thing. And we don't want to start spreading misinformation. We don't want to be the the people that you point to and say, well, I heard it from these guys or these bumble, you know, you know what. Um, We're not about to start spreading misinformation about this stuff either. Um, we don't want to be those guys. Um, so yeah, I think one, because of the gravity of the situation, we're here to entertain. We're here to educate as well at times. Um, but we are here to entertain and let's face it. There's plenty of things that you can focus on if you want to get that information. Um, last night, for example, as Dave's talking about, I sat down and I watched, uh, as we're taping this, I sat down and I watched an hour special on NBC. Uh, that went from stem to stern about everything about this crisis. Um, I got my information that way. If you want to get your information, there are 24-hour news channels. There's plenty of news outlets that will give you everything you need from stem to stern. Dave and I don't have that many boots on the ground. We don't have that kind of news information to to call and, and put all that in front of you. And um, let's face it, we're entertainers. Dave and I are entertainers. Um, so if you want that type of decisive information, there are places to get that. Uh, Dave and I, we do want to entertain you. We do want to put smiles on your faces and we do also want to give you what we give you best, uh, that you've come to us for 14 years for. So we're going to do that. And we're going to, uh, try and take your mind off of the stuff that's going on in the world, uh, for the, uh, as long as this crisis is going on. Now, with that said, there is one aspect that I am going to address uh, one thing that we're going to do. And um, I've had many people ask us for an intention experiment. Um, and that I believe is something worthy of, of an attempt. 
listen, we've done this for other things. We've done prayer and healing requests throughout the years and, and seem to have had some pretty interesting success with these intention experiments. Um, so I have no problem with that right now. We'll do it on this episode, and I'll walk you through it right now. So if you're not interested in that aspect of the show, you can go ahead and fast forward. Uh, it's going to be short, only about 40 to 50 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. It's just going to be a few <laughs> minutes long um, as we do this intention experiment together. And we'll, we'll go from there. So let's do this right now. Now the chances of you driving or perhaps even being at work and distracted are even lessened. So let's do this together. I want all of you to close your eyes and listen to my voice. I know that there's a lot of fear in the world right now, and I know that there's a lot of unease, and I want you to take a couple of deep cleansing breaths. This is something called box breathing that is used by the Navy SEALs in order to gain focus and take them from what seems to be an anxiety-filled moment and bring them back. And this works extremely well. So I want to teach you this little fun trick to help yourself. So while you're doing this, I want you to take a breath in and count silently to five. And breathe in. Two, three, four, five. Hold it. Two, three, four, five. Slowly release it. Two, three, four, five. Another deep breath in, two, three, four, five. Hold it, two, three, four, five. Blow it out, two, three, four, five. Emptied lungs, two, three, four, five. Slowly breathe in again, two, three, four, five. Just continue this cycle for a few more seconds. Deep cleansing breaths. In for five seconds, hold it for five seconds. Out for five seconds, hold it empty for five seconds. In for five seconds, hold for five seconds. Out for five seconds, hold it for five seconds. In for five seconds, and so on. This is a really good calming technique that is used by our own military. So in these deep cleansing breaths, I want you to just imagine all your anxiety, all of the st fears and stress that you have over this current situation. And I want you to just imagine that each breath is filling your body with fresh, beautiful air, clean, crisp air that you can feel going through every inch of your body, clearing you of anything that you might have anxiety, stress, fear, depression, and you can feel it pouring out like black smoke through the bottom of your feet as it just drifts off. Now, together, I want all of us to focus on whatever religious basis you're in, whatever you believe in as a universal power or universal powers. And I want you to imagine this planet healed. People laughing playing outside, communicating with one another again. I want you to see everybody healthy. The coronavirus, COVID-19, eradicated. I want you to see these things in your mind clearly. Because through this visualization and through this prayer and energy request, we are asking that each and every one of us be healed and protected from this disease. We ask that these molecules shrink and simply snuff out. That the virus is completely wiped out. We ask that each and every person afflicted by this virus receive a full healing. We know that in coming together and raising our voices in more than just one, we will be heard. In one giant silent prayer together right now, Lord, we ask that you heal this planet. We ask that you take away from us this nefarious disease, place a thorny hedge of protection around each and every person.
person on this planet. That at this moment, there is no black, there is no white, there is no red, there is no yellow. We are one race of human beings. There is no hate. There are no Republicans. There are no Democrats. They are just people. And Lord, we just ask that you help this derision and you set aside, help us set aside all of this anger and frustration we have. And in these moments of healing, Lord, we just ask that you help us to reconnect with our families, with the people that really matter in our lives, and give us a chance to take this negative and turn it into something positive while our bodies are healing. Because through you and through forgiveness, we can be healed. And we just ask that you take away this disease and replace it with love, contentment, and happiness across the planet. And for those that are hearing these words and having a cynical interior dialogue about not being able to give up anger and hatred, Lord, I ask that you reach into their hearts the deepest. And I ask that you peel back the scales of whatever has hurt them in their lives and allow your light in. The light of the universe, the light of all the religions, the light of all of the good and positive intent in the world so that they can begin healing now as well. That each and every one of us is worthy of forgiveness and of forgiving. That each and every one of us is worthy of being healed. Because the cancer that we hold in our bodies of anger and resentment towards others and ourselves are only lowering our immune system. I ask that you raise our immune system and you lift away from us, take from each and every one of us this affliction that we carry. Peel back the scales from our eyes so that we may see one another again as people. Peel back the scales from our ears so that we can hear one another again. And I ask that you give each and every one of us patience and wisdom so that we can make the right choices and see the importance of life and living it. In this time of crisis, we can go down in flames or we can rise from the ashes and we choose to rise from the ashes. We see now a world that's green and plentiful, filled with clean water and clean air, children and old people alike laughing, giggling, playing, going to the park, being a part of a community again, and anybody in between. We see all of this happiness, this joy and good health restored. So wherever you are in the world listening to this, imagine seeing a brighter future. There's no harm in doing this. And doing it repeatedly. As a matter of fact, you can revisit this part of the recording over and over again. And continue to help build this image inside your head. For those of you that might be cynical and not feeling the need for this, you might need it the most. And I pray that you hear these words and that you will find a healing for yourself in these down times. Lord, we just ask that you be with each and every one of your people on this planet universe, we ask that you hear our pleas and we ask that you stop this disease in its tracks so that we can move forward in a new and enlightened manner. We pray this in your name. Amen. Now I want you to take a few more deep cleansing breaths for me, folks. In through the nose, two, three, four, five, hold it two, three, four, five. Now slowly release it. Two, three, four, five. Hold it. Two, three, four, five. And with this nux deep breath, two, three, four, five. Envision beautiful golden white light just filling your entire body. All the black smoke is gone. And release it. Two, three, four, five. Five. Your body is healthy. Hold it. Two, three, four, five. Another big deep breath in. Two, 
three, four, five. And continue to do this a few more times and releasing and taking in these breaths. And just allow yourself to be happy. In this moment of crisis, give yourself permission to find the good, to find the happiness, because you deserve it. No matter what anybody else says to you or tries to take away from you or tries to put on you, you deserve calm, peace, and happiness. Please enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. And be be a part of this moment. Be in the spaces in between right now. And be with your people and reconnect with them. Hear the stories that your children want to share. And for God's sakes, unleash the imagination that we all had as children. And there's no reason that while we're quarantined in our homes, we can't visit the world of Neverland together or play Barbies with our children or tea parties. Let out that part of you to let the healing happen as well, because we were never happier than when we were children playing and having fun. The stresses in our life, we can do nothing about right now. So embrace the positivity, the good. And if you're alone right now, if you're alone and you're feeling desperate, you're feeling sad or isolated, email me, dave at darknessradio.com. Include your phone number. And I will try to find a time that I call you and we can have a few minute discussion and just chat together because you don't have to be alone. All right. And you can continue to reach out to Dave or Tim at darknessradio.com and email him and he'll do his best to return those emails as well. You can contact us through our social media pages and we will talk to you there. We'll also try to do some videos and communicate with you every few days on social media. So if you're not already following us, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can find links to all of those at darknessradio.com, all the ways that you can communicate with us and keep in touch. But I'm not kidding. If you feel alone and a desperate and don't have somebody in your life that stands out and you just want somebody to talk to for a few minutes, email me, Dave at darknessradio.com. And I will do my best to try to call each and every person that does that. Understand time is, of course, limited. And I do want to spend time with my family as well. But I will try to call each and every one of you just to have a few moments of togetherness. Okay? Well, let's get started with the Laugh Riot Fest that we know as Darkness Radio and Supernatural News. We've got a lot of weird stuff going on in the world this week, Tim. A lot of paranormal stuff continues to occur. Oh, yeah. And uh, we've got a lot of emails, and uh, I think we've even got a call or two, if I remember properly. Um, And I don't know if people know this, Tim, but we have a phone number that you can call Mm -hmm. that goes directly to our Voices from Beyond voicemail. And you can call and leave your story for all of you that have been giving us every excuse under the sun for how busy you are. And you can't possibly... Leave a voicemail for us. Now is your chance. Pick up the phone. You can leave us up to a three-minute message regarding your paranormal experience. If it was funny, sad, scary, weird, happy, whatever you've got, we want to hear it. So make sure that you reach out to us and call 651-300-4977. That is not our live phone number. That is a voicemail phone number. But if you call, you can leave a message. If your story is longer than three minutes and you get cut off, simply call right back in, just say your name again, and then pick up the story where you got cut off. And Tim will put these two pieces together and make sure that we can play it for you on an upcoming episode of the Best in Paranormal Talk Radio. This is Darkness Radio. Tim, where shall we begin? In well, the world of the supernatural news. You know, Dave, the uh, the times are changing. We're in times of self-isolation. Tom Brady is a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. He signed his contract. Uh, yes, there are pictures of him signing that dreaded con- contract there, uh, Patriots fans. Uh, but there are some things out there that, that, uh, that are the same, but a little different. Okay, like what, Tim? Well, uh, Jason Hawes, Steve Gonzalez, and Dave Tango are returning to Ghost Nation, and there's a season two. Uh, with a t- Yeah, w- with a slight twist. What? Yeah, they're putting a little Scooby-Doo in the thing. Okay, I'm, well, I'm, I'm waiting to hear how that goes. Well, well, they're cadaver dogs, Dave. 
not what? not a new concept on this wait, show. Wait, we've wait, we've wait. yeah. Steve Gonzalves is now a cadaver dog. Tim? No, what? no, no, not Steve himself. He's not a cadaver. Dave Tango has become a cadaver dog. No, no, they haven't become cadaver dogs. They're they're bringing cadaver dogs on the show. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. That is a twist. Yeah. I think they did that when they were on Ghost Hunters when they visited the the Black Dahlia home. I think they brought in our buddy uh, Sergeant. Paul Dosti and his dog Buster on that episode, if I remember right. correctly. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jason, Steve, and Dave, uh, the paranormal investigators responsible for igniting the ghost hunting phenomenon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I did it for you. Look at that. I like that. You did yeah. a great job. Thank, thank you. Uh, are back for more adventures to the other side. Second season of uh, the Travel Channel series Ghost Nation premieres Wednesday, April 22nd. See, you got stuff to look forward to here, kids. And see, I'm kind of giving you a little hit to the chin right now. By gosh, by golly. Oh, oh look at you, slugger. Yeah, slugger. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern is uh, when that uh, premieres. It's a special two-hour episode. Uh, and then returns with a fresh batch of weekly one-hour episodes airing at 9 p.m. Eastern. They uh, make that jump to that time after that special premiere. Uh, the season's locations have bigger mysteries and are more chilling and have never been investigated on television. Not only will the team be helping distraught homeowners, they also will be bringing their skills to an abandoned prison complex and a, ooh, a menacing tattoo parlor. Dave, aren't they all pretty much menacing if you've never been in one before? Yeah, you can, it could be a little bit scary, but but don't be afeard, folks. Don't be afeard. It's all okay. Yeah, as far as you know, I mean, I've never really been uh, in a tattoo parlor before. I, I, I'm just saying, uh, what's that? I have at least eight times. I've got eight tattoos, folks. I've got I've got a really good uh, uh, Batman was my very first one on my uh, left bicep, mm -hmm. and. Um, and I got to be honest with you, Tim, as I've gotten older and my muscles have become more slack, he looks more like Slender Man than Batman. <laughs> but uh, but it's there on that same inner bicep. I have my most hated tattoo. It yeah. is an awesome picture of Batman versus Alien that was done by somebody that apparently had the tattooing skills of an eight year old. Oh, no. I didn't notice it until I got home because I was sitting at such an awkward angle. Then they greased it over, wrapped it up, and sent me home. Hmm. And uh, and that, I got one of those at a conference, at a convention. Oh, no. And then killed it off. It, it looked like a five-year-old had drawn it. It's horrible. So I, I keep that hidden. I keep that mighty python sheathed in a basket, Tim. <laughs> That's what I've got. Uh, now I've just got a brand-new tattoo with my little sister. We have matching tattoos. It's got a flame with the infinity symbol. Oh. I also got Zilla on my left arm. Yeah. The king of monsters, Tim. I don't know. The undisputed king of monsters, at least until he goes and squares off against King Kong this November. Then we'll see truly what uh, what unfolds. But I've got Godzilla. Let's see. I've got over on my other arm. I've got I've got a, a tribal dragon in the shape of an S from a name Schrader, Tim. Then oh, I've yeah. got Scully, our mascot. Oh, yeah. Darkness Raider. Yeah. He's, he's on, on my right forearm. And then on my uh, bicep, my right bicep, I have underdog, Tim. Because there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. I, I always look at that when I'm in a moment of fear because I don't have to be afraid. Underdog is here. Tim. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I have a, a small tattoo above my heart of Linus that I got with my ex-wife when we went to Vegas. We each got tattoos and I got one of Linus because my son had just been born. Aww. So now my other kids want to know when I'm going to get tattoos for them. So we're deciding. My daughter wants me to get little red ruby slippers for her because she's a, a um, Wizard of Oz fan. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other ones are trying to each choose. So we might like I might do a dinosaur for Damien and and little red ruby slippers for Pacey and and uh, for Ripley, maybe an alien. Why wouldn't you do a uh, like a small uh, one of Robin for Damien? Well, you know, I consider that. But when you think of my son, what really comes to mind is um, not Robin the Boy Wonder, even though I did name my son Damien after Damien Wayne, Batman's son, not after Damien thorn from the uh omen movies as everyone thinks um i've thought of that but my son is just when you think of of my son damien dinosaurs is his world ah okay so hmm. you know that that is he's a savant when it comes to dinosaurs and I, that really kind of maybe what i'll do is i'll get a uh there there's an old cartoon of robin dressed uh, of a dinosaur dressed in a robin outfit maybe i'll get Ooh, that tattoo that's the best of both worlds right there yeah yeah, yeah. Huh. so that's it uh look at you quoting miley miley cyrus 
Well, I, I'm trying not to. That's not really where I was going. But hey, if it if it uh, cranks your yank or yanks your crank, whatever. Uh, sure, yeah. I want it to go on record right now as though I've never had my yank cranked by Miley Cyrus, Tim. Never, ever. <laughs> well, nor have I ever yanked said crank. I think from Miley there's Cyrus. a bunch of millennials that would pay good money for that. Um, I, as I was saying in the yeah. story. Uh, huh? I got all excited tattoos, Tim. I have eight of them, or nine. I, I've lost count at this point. No, that's fine. I mean, you know, you, uh, me, I'm uh, I'm a little too furry for the old uh, tattoo. Um, I just see, why not just get, like, on your hairy chest where there's a couple of uh, bare spots, put eyes, so it looks like, like uh, you know, eyes looking out of the forest, like from the old cartoons when you'd <laughs> let to go, you just see the little eye, the patches of eyes. I think that would be awesome on you. Uh, because uh in the tattoo ink how cool would that be do they make glow in the dark tattoo ink i don't know if they do or that's not an, that's a there probably is because it's already a cool idea and every cool idea i have already seems to be somebody else's that uh, yeah i think you you know what i think someone may take your idea if it hasn't already been done before I, that just seems like a jail tattoo to me when you when you bring it up <laughs> A jail test. Well, All you right. know why you're sleeping. You know, you get the glow in the dark eyes. Someone's always watching out so that they don't get uh, buggered in jail. I always feel like yeah. somebody's watching me here. I don't know. I no privacy. I don't know why I went. I don't know why I went dark on that deal, but I did. It just to me, it just uh, it seems like a protection deal in jail. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I anyway, just look like a Looney Tunes character to me, but uh, that's cool. Either way. Anyway, I think we were talking about uh, Ghost Nation's return to the television screens coming up soon. Yes. Using cadaver dogs, going to a haunted prison in a creepy tattoo parlor. Yes, creepy uh, menacing tattoo parlor. Dave. Was Menac- to- menacing was the uh, was the word that was used in that, uh, that phrase. Uh, this time, they are calling in an old friend uh, for some help. Paranormal investigator Sherry ben- uh, D. Benedetti. Uh, joins the investigations to keep a close eye on the monitors, reviewing footage on the hunt for all things paranormal. After 15 years of hunting ghosts, we know that finding evidence of the paranormal activity of the... Pa- I, I put an extra word in there. Uh, it's it's part of my job. Uh, won't be- for that? No, I don't charge anybody for, for that deal. Okay. Uh, won't be enough to solve these problems entirely, said Hawes. Uh, we need to get to the source of the disturbance to bring these families much needed peace or else innocent people will continue to suffer since these are high stakes personal cases. Uh, fans will see double the evidence and double the scares all season long on all investigations. Collecting evidence is just the beginning. The team isn't just para- uh, parachuting in to conduct a cursory review of the case. With the help of their local contacts, they are going to embed themselves in the community, uh, conducting multi-day investigations in an effort to track down the true source of these hauntings and uh, restore peace to the living under the United Paranormal Research Research Organization banner. It isn't only uh, Hawes, Gonzales, and Tango facing off against an unseen entity. Local paranormal groups, sometimes even the homeowners themselves, will join the team as they employ new devices and techniques for confronting and questioning spirits. They'll do whatever it takes to entice the ghost into telling its story and stop at nothing to get to the bottom of the paranormal phenomena. There you go. Uh, new locations this season include, I believe it's Louisburg, not Louisburg. Uh, new. <laughs> it's an inside joke. North Carolina, Warwick, New yeah, York. Man. What's that? You just want to keep mixing it up with the good people of Louisville. It's Louisville, Dave. There is no but, King Lou. Lu- Louisville, Tim. The people that live there have have oh, taken become lazy. Now. They've become lazy, Dave. Wow, wow. I tell them to email you about it, but if they're lazy, they probably won't. That's right. They don't type. They they just yell out the window. Uh, Warwick, New York, Waynesville, Ohio, Biglerville, Pennsylvania, and Blair, South Carolina. There you go. If you want more information, you can go to TravelChannel.com slash Ghost Nation. You can also get show extras, behind-the-scenes exclusive videos, and photo galleries featuring locations from the upcoming season. Plus, you can check out the brand-new digital series, Up Close and Paranormal, where an intimate discussion takes place. The Ghost Nation team will share 
their insight into their investigative tactics, advice for up and coming investigations, and more. You can also follow at Travel Channel at Ghost Nation and hashtag Ghost Nation on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for additional content and updates. So there you go. Very cool. If you missed it, see, you should be watching my social media because Friday, yesterday, Tim, Mm -hmm. yesterday, Mm -hmm. on Friday, Mm -hmm. which is actually today because we're recording it on Friday, but you're listening to it on Saturday. So yesterday, on Friday, there was a six-hour marathon of The Holzer Files Season 1, and I was live tweeting during that on the Twitter, Tim. On the Twitter, you say? On the Twitter. And, oh, was I I was funny. I don't want to brag, but I was pretty funny and charming through most of it. I mean, it hasn't happened yet, but I'm I'm confident that's how I'm going to be. Witty and charming, Tim. Oh, I'm confident you will be, too, yeah. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's it. That's the excitement right there. All right. Uh, welcome back to our Airwaves, Ghost Nation. I believe Ghost Hunters uh, on A&E returns in uh, April, on like April 14th or something. So watch out for ghost hunters who they're claiming they're bringing us definitive proof of the afterlife this season, Tim. Definitive proof. Undeniable proof. Wow. Good. I know. Pretty exciting, huh? You know, it's uh, it's it's like we're uh, getting into a little bit of a competition here, I'd say. Uh, yeah, but no wagering, please. No wagering. <laughs> All right, where are we off to next in the world of supernatural news? A town in England, which I think when you say it sounds Swedish. Okay, let me hear it. Her, don't, her, don't her. Put, wait. Oh, I knew you were going to put the accent. I wanted to hear it first clean, oh. see if I could hear the Swedish before you put it in the Swedish. Let me hear it clean, and then your version with the Swedish accent to give me the full full vibe. Okay, go ahead. Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire, I agree. Yeah. Hertfordshire. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire. Hey, hey, bird. Hey, hey, mort, mort, mort. Yep. I agree. Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire. Okay. What's going on in Hertfordshire? Well, a monk and a little girl singing. Uh, a monk, a little girl singing and feeling watched. Those are the things that are inside one of Hertfordshire's um, most haunted inns. <laughs> now I'm going to okay. read. And now I, I feel like I need to read like that. It's It's like everything needs to end in that accent. A um, a monk is said to have been hanged in the bar, but that isn't the only story that haunts the Brockett Arms, uh, as we uh, find out in this story. A lot of us are intrigued about the paranormal and whether there is truly life after death. Hertfordshire is uh, incredibly historic with examples uh, like the Royston Cave, which dates back 900 years to the Roman settlement of (laughs) Verul... I can't even say this. Of Verulamium, Verulamium, but I can't, I don't know, in St. Albans. It's in St. Albans. You deal with it. Yeah, I got you. I'm with you. Uh, we also have a lot of old pubs and inns, it says, many of which are bursting with creepy stories and tales of mysterious shadows and things that go bump in the night. One of those very inns is the Brockett Arms, which you can go and stay at if you dare. Visitors to the pub have claimed to see a monk walking around the bar, and the voice of a little girl singing can apparently be heard in the toilets uncomfortable if you ask me <laughs> you're just sitting there you know doing your business dave and a little girl starts singing <clears throat> i don't know don't you find that on you know what I'm a, I'm a dad tim i've heard that my whole life uh potty training my daughter kayla was quite the toilet singer she yeah. would go up and uh while whilst doing her business you just hear her break into tune you know a little i love you you love me we're a happy family. Dad, I'm done. But you're in a bar in the men's room. I was not in a bar in the men's room with my daughter. What kind of weirdo do you think I am? But I'm saying you're in a bar oh, in a men's room. Is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That would be a little unnerving. Yeah. I would ask, could you spare a square? Well. Yeah. Intrigued, it says here, the uh-huh. uh, the, the people from Hertz Live, and, and we're not talking oh. about the car company, uh, okay. spoke to the owners to uh, hear what it was like to run one of Hertz for uh, most haunted inns. Um, they, uh, Kelly Smalley, 42 years old, owns and runs the Brock at Arms with her husband, 57-year-old Edward James. And, uh, ooh, wow, you got a younger one. And uh, has done for so for the last seven years. I don't know why I'm impressed by that, but I am. Uh, she said there's quite a few stories about the pub, and it, as it dates back to uh, the 14th century, it's a very old pub as it's 
used to be a monk's quarters uh, where they were in the pilgrimage. Uh, one of the stories we've heard is that there's a monk who uh, hung himself. He seems to still be here, and people have said that they've seen him, but he's friendly, and he just sort of walks around the place. Well, he probably needs a drink. I mean, you know, you're a monk. Could be, you're, yeah. You're finally yeah. on Get the a other. monk's a hard thing to do. Yeah, you know, and you're finally over on the other side. You probably want a drink. Just saying. In the 14th century, the Brockett Arms was originally the monastic quarters for the Norman Church until the Reformation. Or Reformation. It's a Reformation, too, especially if you're smoking. Wow. No, this is a reefer nation we've become, Tim. Oh, well, <laughs> hey, I got my medical. I don't know about you. Uh, the local legend has said that a um, monk had, or was tried and hanged in the bar area on a hook. In fact, a hook can be seen in the bar today, which many think is the original one. Many believe the monk now haunts the pub and is said to be small uh, well, wearing a brown habit, I don't know that they should judge size here. Uh, some have reportedly even seen him on fire. Oh, God. Uh, staring at people in the middle of the day. Uh, we have a room, room one, where a four -poster, with a four-poster bed. People have stayed in there and said they felt something sitting on the bed or felt a presence in the room. A lot of people have said that, continued Kelly. We had, a bil or we had builders in room three, and they have said they felt uneasy when they were working and they felt they they felt like someone was watching them uh we've had a couple of drinkers say that there's an old lady in the back of the bar we have a little boy who sits in the fireplace in the corridor i'm forever turning the lights off whenever i go upstairs and there's sometimes a door open that doesn't normally open they're very thick doors uh we also have a couple of regular customers who have also seen a dog in the bar and a friend of ours who stayed and heard a little girl singing I do like to believe that there is something after life and in the paranormal. Uh, the problem is that we is that I have to go over whenever. Let me read that over. Uh, the problem is is that I have to go over whenever the alarms go off in the middle of the night, and I don't want to think about all of it when I'm in there on my own. I don't want to know exactly what's here. For exactly this reason, Kelly hasn't yet allowed paranormal investigators into the pub. Uh, but they are well aware of the pub. She said, normally I get an email every week. It's just that I have to work here on my own or come over in the middle of the night, and it plays on my mind. I just don't know, or I just don't think I want to know. Uh, I live in the post office next door, which also dates back further than the pub. We have heard things going on there, too. When I had my baby, my husband once slept on the sofa after he came in late so he wouldn't wake us up. And he said that he had heard two knocks on our door, which has a glass panel. Three or four weeks later, I heard it in the middle of the night, and I thought that's strange because normally the dogs would go mad. I got up and opened the door, and there was no one there. I then told my husband about it, and he said that that's strange because he said that he had that as well. I never had a baby monitor, one because I can hear the children, but I don't want to hear anyone else. Uh, upstairs definitely doesn't have or feel the same as downstairs in that house. I'm quite happy for them. Uh, or I'm quite happy for them to their thing and us to do ours. Uh, asked if she would recommend her in to paranormal fanatics. Kelly says, by all means, come and stay. On one hand, uh, we tell or we to tell people. On the one hand, we to tell people come and stay and see if you experience anything, but we don't want to put anyone off. We don't really go and advertise ourselves as a haunted pub, but on the other hand, we do tell people to stay about uh, if, to stay about it if they ask us anything. It's kind of written weird. Uh, apart from the ghostly hauntings, the Brockett Arms offers guests the chance to enjoy delicious food along with a huge range of real ales and wines. Lunch is served from 12 to 2.30 p.m. each day, and evening dinner service runs from 6.30 to 9 p.m. There are five double uh, suite rooms and one twin room with its own bathroom, which have all been beautifully furnished and have exposed wooden beams throughout. Outside, there's also a lovely garden and play area, perfect for those summer nights with friends and family. So there you go. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, you know, hopefully we'll get back to that traveling and get to see all these cool things. Yeah, that's for sure. All right. I've got a, an interesting email that came to me, Tim. Okay. Um, uh, it's very short, 
very short, and I thought we should maybe talk about this for a few minutes. All right. I don't know that she wants me to give her name on air. Sure. So we're just going to call her B.A. Okay. I know this is weird, but we have recently started having problems with what we believe are demons in our daughter. At least two. I've never had to deal with anything like this, but I fear for my daughter, and she is fearing for her soul. I don't know what to do. All right. Well, I, I would start maybe in some questioning. If she's afraid, has she been doing anything that might have invited this in? And I know it's going to be hard for her to want to necessarily tell the truth, but if we know kind of the entry point, um, you know, was it playing with Ouija boards, uh, you know, ghost hunting? Was there something she was doing that she thinks attracted this to her? That would give us a better uh, feel for that. Um you know, concept, then you can kind of address that situation a little bit more clearly. I, I guess I need more information too, but you know, teenage girls and boys in general act weird and they could be happy one minute and raging assholes the next. I think that's a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. Um, as I was also a teen boy, not a girl, uh, that was Tim yeah. in the eighties. Yep. We, uh, we've taken turns on that, but I, I, you know, mood swings, changes, stresses at school, uh, things like that. And then again, talking to a doctor, um, you know, uh, BA, it, it may be hard. Your, your child just might be need, you know, need to be assessed for um, depression, anxiety, or other situations. And that would be my advice to you to start. Those are the basics. Um, if you've gone that route and not feeling that you're getting heard, there are some people out there, Robert Major, who we've talked to on the show numerous times, who does ghost removal. Um, Reverend Bill Bean is a good, uh, alternative. You can look these people up on, uh, the Facebook and, um, they have a pretty big reach, uh, to contact them that way. Um, they might be able to help you even remotely in, in trying to get a handle on what's going on. Uh, another thing that we always recommend, this comes directly from exorcists and lay exorcists and uh, deliverance ministers that we've worked with is using the prayer of Michael the Archangel. So you as the mother have authority over your child and their soul. Um, so that means if you pray over your child, pray for uh, deliverance, this, this may help. You're not powerless. That's the most important thing. You and your daughter are not powerless. She has the ability to cast it out as well with your help. You just need to, you know, read the prayer of Michael the Angel, uh, Archangel over her. It's a free prayer you can find online. It's considered to be one of the most powerful of all of the religious prayers in, in dealing with exorcism and dealing with uh, pushing something out. But that might be a good start for you to at least, you know, um, get the ball rolling and pray together often. Uh, you know, put that intention out there often that uh, she is protected, she is uh, under control, and we'll just say right now, Lord, we just ask that you be with this woman and her child and their family, give them strength, uh, wisdom, and uh, the ability to deal with whatever affliction is upon her, be it spiritual or, or mental or health issues. We just ask that you help clear them of this issue and deliver them from any uh, beings or entities or energies that have ill intent towards them. We know through you all things are possible. We pray this in your name. Amen. Something similar like that, a prayer like that might be more direct and powerful to use. And just say that prayer over and over again over your, your child. Uh, and also ask for thorny hedge of protection to be placed around that child so that if you do um, evict this spirit, it doesn't try to worm its way back into her. So we wish you all the luck in the world, BA. I hope that uh, you'll be able to get some help from that. Um, and we will, uh, I'm going to forward your, your email to our friend Robert Major and see if he might be able to help you as well. Uh, take it another step further. All right, Tim, where are we off to next in the world of supernatural news? Uh, we are heading to Jack Osborne's house in L.A., believe it or not. Do tell. I know that the uh, season is is starting to roll here, and we're working on getting Jack and Katrina on the show soon. But what's going on? Well, uh, the son of Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne co-host Travel Channel's Portals to Hell, as you had mentioned, they uh, shouldn't, uh, or they say you shouldn't bring your work home with you. But for uh, Jack Osbourne, it seems like he has little choice in the matter in this case. In the last six months, I've been having a lot of scary, strange things happening in my home, he tells Rolling Stone. 
of his Los Angeles residence. My girlfriend keeps seeing a figure at night. I woke up and a woman was standing over me. My house is brand new. I don't know if things follow me home. I just think whatever's out there knows I'm looking for it. Osborne is a co-host of Portals to Hell, the second season of which premiered March 13th on the Travel Channel. He's the executive producer of the reality show, for which he teamed up with paranormal researcher and investigator Katrina Weidman to explore some of the most haunted places in the world. I was a big sci-fi nerd growing up, Osborne says, of his current career choice. I came into it through the UFO thing. The son of Ozzy and Sharon also grew up in a haunted house in England. All of a sudden, me and my sister Kelly heard someone walking on the landing above us, he recalls, of a particularly scary incident. It was as clear as day and getting closer and closer. I nearly ended up jumping out of the window. Weidman tells Rolling Stone she got a taste for the paranormal after a childhood of living in haunted homes. It really sparked this lifelong quest of there's got to be something more to it than what we think we know, she says. She went on to co-host A&E's docudrama Paranormal State from 2007 to 2011, among other programs. When Osborne reached out to Weidman about appearing in Portals to Hell, she jumped at the chance, having grown up watching him on MTV's The Osbournes. Our views of the paranormal were very much in tune with each other, she says. It made sense to work together. The season two premiere of Portals to Hell takes the duo to Paulding, Ohio, where they investigate a 150-year-old jail haunted by a bevy of spooks. Uh, we have a few criteria for what we or what sites we visit, Osborne says. The first one is, has it been investigated before? And then what's the activity? We'll go back to places that might have been on a bunch of shows if the activity is increasing. Osborne says that the most sinister location they visited on this season was the Haunted Hill House in Mineral Wells, Texas. The structure was home to a lot of shady goings-on over the past 150 years or so, including prostitution, bootlegging, and all manners of other illegal enterprises. The activity there was wild, he says. It was really dark. It felt very horrible. Sometimes we'll ask if the spirits can let us know if they were there. When we did, there was a a sound of a baseball bat hitting the wall. It was the loudest bang ever. The next episode of Portals to Hell airs this coming weekend at 10 p.m. Eastern when the pair will investigate the Fort Williams Henry in uh, Lake George, New York. So there you go. It's actually a really fun show. I've enjoyed watching it and catching up with our friend Katrina Weidman. And uh, I had a chance to do Salem Live this last year and sat down with Jack and had some interesting conversations. Good guy. Fun guy. And uh, we're working on trying to get them on the show here soon. So keep tuning in and we'll... We'll take you through the portals, the portals to hell together right here on this program. All right, Tim, we have another email from one of our listeners. Are you ready for this? Ready. The email starts, good morning, Dave. My name is Josh, and I live over in North Dakota. Well, first of all, Josh, we're sorry to hear that. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure if this counts as a paranormal story, but I'll share it anyway. So I live alone in an apartment in a small town near nearby bed. Oh, near my bed, I think is what he meant to say. Oh, okay. Okay, so I live alone in an apartment in a small town. Near my bed, I have a TV, a fire TV stick, and a lamp plugged into a power strip on my nightstand. The other night, I went to my bedroom for the night and wanted to turn on my TV, but it wouldn't turn on. No. Oh, my God, this is a nightmare already, Tim. I don't know that I can go any further. You shouldn't. I mean, I can't turn my TV on in my room. I don't even want to be in my room, Tim. Well, I have an iPad, so it's it's easier. Don't, yeah. Tell my wife I said that, though, all right? Because that'll get me in a lot of trouble. It really will, yeah. yeah. It wouldn't turn on. Then I noticed my TV was unplugged. There's been at least two additional times that I found one or more items unplugged that I don't remember unplugging. Perhaps this is something I did in my sleep because I tend to unplug everything when I'm away for a weekend or longer or something else is going on. I listened to your show years ago and started listening again to your recordings. Thank you so much for sharing them. I really enjoy listening while working on hobby projects. Keep up the great work. This comes from Yash. Josh. Oh, oh, Josh. Not Yash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, here's the thing. I can't answer, you know, you you kind of answered yourself. If you're known, if you're a known unplugger, God knows what what you could be doing in your sleep. Maybe you're unplugging in your sleep. Um, here, maybe the spirits are telling you this. Maybe you, they're telling you to unplug for a while. Maybe they. Maybe if you're going through high levels of stress and not sleeping well, maybe this is a spirit's way 
maybe a loved one, guardian angel, or the uh, ghost of a neighbor that once lived in this apartment saying, it's time for the TV to go off, son. I got, and maybe that's it. I got a radical theory here. Radical theory brought to you by Darkness Radio. Yes, go ahead. Just leave the stuff plugged in, Josh. Uh, it It's not even a couple of pennies a month. Yeah, but you, you know what? I understand that. Maybe you've, maybe he's got some old equipment and he's afraid uh, it's going to start a fire, Tim. I don't think that's a bad plan. Uh, unless yeah. the, the, the wiring is over 100 years old, it, yeah. there's no fire it's going to start. Yeah. Yeah. Craziness. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's that's that email. I, Josh, I don't know. I don't. It could be paranormal. I, I, like I said, maybe pay attention to it, and maybe just leave stuff unplugged in your room. Maybe that should just be your place of solace and and relaxation, and not really communicating or you know watching TV. Maybe that. Maybe that's what it really comes down to. I don't know. So, I could be wrong. It's been known to happen from time to time. So the ghosts can't watch TV. Hey Tim. Yeah. Well, maybe the ghosts want a good night of sleep as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're tired of the shenanigans he's watching. Oh, it could be. Did you ever think of that? Maybe it's reruns of Riverdale, Tim. Like a 24-7 Riverdale channel. What, what do you got against Riverdale? Oh, my God. I forgot you're an Archie. I forgot. I'm sorry. So I got an email here, Tim. Yeah. Katie writes in. She says, was thinking of you last night. <laughs> Were you? <laughs> that was the only part of the email I feel pretty good about myself. But she goes on to say, while playing trivia at the bar. Ah. Uh, yeah. This question came up. What magazine made the mistake of printing an obituary for Kirk Douglas while he was still alive? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. In your turns face, was skeptics. People, yeah, it turns so. out it was People magazine. Mm-hmm. Thought you'd like to know that there is even more proof that you aren't the only one who thought he died much See? earlier than he did. That comes from Katie here in the great state of Minnesota. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. For noticing that I'm not crazy, Katie. Yep. Well, not as crazy as I once thought. So People Magazine. Oh, but I remember watching it on TV, Katie. So maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe that article through um, People made it through because the author of that article remembered that moment happening as well and posted it at that point. You know, they, they not posted it. I'm thinking in, you know, the new millennium talk, right. but, yeah. Yeah. but ran that story. I don't know. It's got to go through a lot of people, editorial-wise, to get printed. You know, I'm just saying. You mentioned uh, Katie. Can I? Can I? Uh, can I tell you a funny story? Please, ladies and gentlemen, Tim's funny story brought to you by. Uh, brought to you by our healthcare system. No, this was this was a spot <laughs> for our commercial, Tim. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 Tim's funny story brought to you by. Brought to you by Feels. Uh, Feels CBD. Um, by all means, alleviate your stress, your your anxiety, your your chronic pain, and and everything else with feels. Um, Dave, uh, you know, as you know, my uh, my old man was in the hospital. Yes. And um, as we uh, were bringing him into the ER, he was in septic shock. Um, and uh, it just so turns out the far reach of our our show is amazing. I I'm finding this out. Do tell. Uh, so we're, we're checking the old man in and the guy who's uh, the nurse, who's, who's checking everybody in, this guy keeps looking at me kind of funny. Now that's not unusual. You know, I've got warrants in eight States. Um, but no, I'm kidding. Um, but <laughs> this guy's kind of looking at me kind of it's only unusual. six States, by the way, folks. Yeah, it's only six. Um, but he's kind of looking at me and he's kind of looking at me and he's like, like he knows me. Now, you know, we do a podcast. It's it's voice. Not a lot of people would know my face, you know, but, uh, you know, I I did say a few things to him. And okay. there's a last name of Dennis. You know, my dad and I share the last name, the same last name. Um, So we get the old man in there and he's babbling incoherently. And we're, <laughs> you know, we're we're getting him uh, we're getting him checked in. And he goes Tim Dennis. And I go, yeah. And he goes, hey, he goes, I'm. Katie Hart so-and-so. So it turns out we got drunk with this guy at Katie Hart's wedding. <clears throat> oh, we did? Yeah. <laughs> well, you did. I was completely stone-cold sober. Yeah, I but, record. but yeah. I got I got drunk with him at Katie Hart's wedding. Well, so, it's a small world after all. Yeah, so true. It's a small world after all. 
It's a small world after all, but I still wouldn't want to paint it. So it, no, that's true. That would be a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, so it turns out when you uh, when you get drunk with members of our fine healthcare system, uh, you end up getting your relatives really good care. Because my Were you dad uncomfortable huh? when when he recognized you. Were you uncomfortable? No, not at all. No, in fact, we uh, we sat and talked and and uh, we had a good time. And he was telling me about the, the the nursing staff that was working on my my old man and and how the critical care nurse that was working on him was one of the best in the hospital. And yeah, so it was no, it, we had a good time. So crazy, huh? Yeah, crazy. See, I, I was still I feel uncomfortable and shuffle my feet and feel really? sick to my stomach. No. And I, you know, when people approach me out and about where I'm not expecting them, I, it's so weird. Like I said, we could be at an event with thousands of people, which we have been. Not a problem. You you connect with me at Walgreens, and I'm probably you're going to think I've uh, I'm on the spectrum somewhere. I get really? very my eyes dart around. I dig at the floor with my toe, and I shuffle. And yeah, yeah. Really? And it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm so uncomfortable. I don't know why it is. Social anxiety is brutal. Oh, we, no, we had a wonderful conversation. That's so, cool. Yeah. I wish I was you sometimes. Oh. Hey, we should acknowledge, Tim. Do you know what, um, technically yesterday, but it's today for us because we're recording it on Friday. Mm -hmm. Do you know what today marks, Tim? No, what's that? Five years. Five years ago, March 20th, 2015. Mally's last night behind the Supernatural News Desk with us on Darkness Radio. That's right. Officially. I mean, she's been back to visit with you a couple times when I've been out of town. Yep. Because apparently she doesn't want to come on when I'm here. Whatever. But uh, <laughs> she she is, uh, it was five years ago already, Tim. Oh, my God. It has been. Yeah. Can you believe that? Wow. Five years. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of uh, paranormal in itself. Well, we can get her on. I mean, if you want to. We want to do but a show with the three of us again. Uh, I mean, no, we, can, okay. I mean, we can do a reunion show. I'm going to be, I got a thing that I'm doing where you, I'll be you in gotta, a place. got to wash your I'm, hair? I mean. Yeah, yeah, wash my hair in, in yeah. a place that I do in a thing. I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. But we can yeah. get her on. I mean. Yeah. 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 It was, uh, yeah, my, my post uh, on March 20th, 2015 said this evening, we say goodbye to a major part of our show. Join us as we bid Mally Fox a loving farewell on her final regular appearance on supernatural news and uh she she came on to do the show i've got a nice picture of us when we were out live from the haunted hayride in minnesota mm -hmm. yep oh that's right i did yeah. see that yeah the tree of us yeah the yeah. tree of us one two and three of us tree yeah. yeah so um pretty crazy yeah pretty crazy yeah, yeah. so that's uh that's it that's if you like, I can call her up real quick. We can get her on. The I got a, we got a thing oh. we're doing shows going on okay. right now. We should probably complete that show. But uh, right. before we do, let's take a quick break. We've got more news to share, more of your emails, and we want to hear your story. Six five one three zero zero four nine seven seven is our phone number for the voices from beyond voicemail. Six five one three zero zero four nine seven seven. Please. Please pick up your phone and give us a call. Have you seen Bigfoot, Chupacabra, maybe a Randy Leprechaun? Have you played with a Ouija board? Have you seen a demon, an angel, a ghost, a ghost visitation, a dream visitation, poltergeist activity? We are here to believe you. We want to hear your story. 651-300-4977. There's no better time than right now where we all have a lot of free time on our hands than to call us and share your paranormal experiences. We'll be right back with more Darkness Radio. Babies come with lots of decisions. Cloth or disposable? Crib or bassinet? So when it comes to protection, go with the safest, most effective choice, vaccination. Get all the recommended vaccines for your baby by age two to protect your child against 14 serious childhood diseases. For more reasons to vaccinate, talk to your child's doctor. Go to cdc.gov slash vaccines or call 800-CDC-INFO. A message from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Most of us like to be out in the sun. That's why sunscreen and other safety measures are key to protecting your skin from aging and cancer. The FDA recommends using a sunscreen with an SPF of 15 or higher. Also, look for broad spectrum on the label. That means both harmful ultraviolet A and B rays are blocked. Remember, SPF plus broad spectrum equal healthy fun in the sun. Visit www.fda.gov slash sunscreen for more information. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. 
All right, Mr. Dennis, it is time to dig deeper into the supernatural news from around the world this past week. What have we uncovered this week, sir? Well, a paranormal investigator has caught a ghost on camera in a popular section of woods. Martin Sullivan has recorded an unusual sighting in Brocklesby Woods. I'll give you three guesses as to where this exists. Uh, um, Brocklesby Woods. This has got to be Wisconsin. It's the worst name I've yes, ever heard. Yes, it is. It's in Wisconsin, uh, deep in the heart of uh, Ed Gein territory, uh, on a late night investigation. So, <laughs> no, where is it really? <laughs> It's uh, it's it's somewhere in England, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, a popular paranormal investigator has caught a ghost on camera in Brocklesby Woods. Forty-seven-year-old Martin Sullivan recorded an unusual sighting in Brocklesby Woods on a late-night investigation. Martin, founder of Ghost Encounters Global, uh, boy, he really <laughs> when he named the thing, he was uh, he was thinking expansion, wasn't he? Long term, yeah, yeah, very good. He was. Look at him. Yeah, Uh, says he doesn't or didn't notice the uh, ghostly figure until reviewing the footage after his exploration. He said, you can see a figure on a bike shooting straight past me. Uh, They're going at some speed. Martin from Barton upon Humber. Oh, yeah, he's definitely from Wisconsin. Uh, Says he has recorded quite a lot of paranormal activity in Brocklesby Wood, uh, which is only open to the public from April 1st to August 31st. He managed to capture this unusual sighting on a live stream, which uploads straight onto social media. I'd recorded somebody's voice earlier in the video, but I didn't notice the person on the bike at that time, said Martin. Uh, Somebody brought it to my attention by saying something uh, shoots by at five minutes in so many seconds. I thought it was amazing. I have been quite lucky with what I've been able to capture. This is not the only unusual sighting Martin has documented over the years. Uh, Martin says he has videos of doors closing by themselves, audio recordings of spirits speaking his name, and photos of a young girl dressed in all white standing in a church doorway. He said, I didn't believe in ghosts or anything like that up until about three years ago. It has now become uh, somewhat of a hobby. I find it all quite interesting. It all started because I was bored one day and ended up watching an American ghost hunting program on TV. Oh, of course. Uh, I thought this isn't real, and I wanted to test it all out for myself. Martin uh, said he thought, or he bought rather, a voice recorder and traveled down to a former church to try out his new equipment. He added, I went inside the X church, which is now more of a museum, and recorded a woman telling me, I'm stupid. <laughs> oh, he could have. I never even have to go that far. That's My right. Wife to tell me that right here at home. That's right. Yeah, I don't know why he went all the way down there and actually had to buy equipment. Uh, I was so scared I didn't turn my audio player on for about two weeks. <laughs> Uh, Following this, Martin set up Ghost Encounters Global on Facebook, inviting others to share their paranormal sightings. The group now has 64,000 members. I don't know how you split them all up during an investigation, but hey, good luck to you. Uh, He has recently set up another page, Ghost Encounters Global Events, where he uploads his footage. Martin said, a lot of people have asked me to organize ghost hunts. I did a few events last year, but haven't done any this year. I'll probably plan some later in the year. So there you go. Very cool. Interesting. Always interesting stuff. Um, Tim, you know, I like to be fair, right, on this show. Mm -hmm. And I've read when I get emails that uh, people are unhappy with me. Right. Okay. Yeah. And and I've been open about that. And you know, sure. a, a, you know, a good portion of these emails, you know, even though we we run the show, come addressed to me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I had one listener who pointed out maybe it's because you always say email me at daviddarknessradio.com. So when they're emailing you, they figure you're the one reading it, so they forget to address Tim because it's not addressed to Tim. Okay. So that is a good good thought, Tim. Okay. You don't have to take it as personally anymore and maybe reel back on the therapy from time to time. Uh, But. Okay. Go on. Someone upset with me and they emailed you? So I'm in all fairness, I'm going to read an email that we got. Okay. Sure. Dave. It's only addressed to me, Tim. Sorry. No, it's fine. Dave. You have to be the most self-centered, big-headed, self-loving, utter asshole I've ever heard of. Wow. You are so up yourself. There's no word for it. 
You seem to think you're wonderful. Hmm. I kind of do. You're convinced that you're a big deal for some reason. Well, you have a TV show. I mean, long running radio show. I'm an yeah. author, publisher, an actual publishing house. Yeah. I, I've hosted Coast to Coast AM and Midnight in the Desert, Art's first and last paranormal radio shows. Yeah. Uh, plus, my mom and your mom have told me I'm a pretty big deal, Tim. Yeah, my mom loves you. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. The email continues. 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 <laughs> yeah, this here email continues with the following statement. You boring asshole. Wow. You are sadly lacking in intelligence and knowledge of the world. You always think you know better than Tim, who, unlike you, capitalized, is a nice guy. He is hmm. humble. You are conceited. Hang your head in shame. And that comes from Hossum or Hossum. Mm. So, I don't know how. You got a fan, Tim. Hossum, big fan of yours. Well, I'm a big I, fan. I appreciate it. I don't know how humble I am. I mean, I do have some ego. I I like to I like to berate my imaginary friend. I like to mm-hmm. boss him around. Um, Understandable. I'd be kind of a jerk to you from time to time. I like so. to kick my teddy bear in the ass every once in a while yeah. when I get when I get angry. Um, uh, I swear out loud a lot. Oof. Yeah. Um, well, so awesome did too. So that kind of. I uh, I take the Lord's name. I take the Lord's name in vain quite often. Ooh, that's not. I wouldn't admit to that out loud. Uh, but uh, I drink on Sundays. Know, it was, uh, I think, uh, you know, they do that in church a lot, uh, tipping wine and handing wafers. So oh. you're just part of the crew. Well, there's that. But that yeah. Um, I watch wrestling. Oh, wrestling. Yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty good. I love me some wrestling. Can I can I say this, though, Tim? Uh, sure. I don't think any of those prove that you're not humble, but uh, mm-hmm. nice attempts. Um, okay. You know, I, I will take exception with one part, Tim. Sure. What's that? Uh, that he calls me an asshole. My mom said, uh, if anything, I'm the entire ass. Oh, well, there's that, yeah. Whole and everything all included. Mm-hmm. Right and left cheek and whole, Tim. I like to commit to something. So, uh, awesome. Thank you. You've been heard. <laughs> and apparently, you keep listening, which means we're being heard. So, thank you for tuning in and hating me either way. I'm a, I'm a winner. I just look at it that way. Winning! Hashtag Charlie Sheen 20 years ago. <laughs> all right, Tim. Uh, where shall we go next in the world of supernatural news? There's an article out there, Dave, that asks why people are so easily fooled by conspiracy theories they read online. How timely this article is. It is. Let us us dig deeper and find out. Because, by gosh, there are quite a few of them out there. Uh, Science will get quite a few admirer, admirer, admirer these days. It isn't well written, Dave, but I'll try and read it. Uh, sadly, it more it's moreover getting quite a few pageant from incorrect data. Oh boy, is this roughly written? Yeah, let's let's just skip the story. It sounds like maybe it was written in one place and then they loosely translated it using a translation device. Well, I'll give you a rough translation. How's that? Okay, yeah, well, we'll give that. Yeah, uh, seven in ten Americans suppose the benefits from science outweigh the harms, and nine in ten suppose science and technology will create additional options for future generations. Scientists have made dramatic development in figuring out the universe and the mechanisms of biology and advances in computation obtain benefits in all fields of science. Alternately, Americans are surrounded by technique of a rising tide of incorrect data and fake science. Take climate alternate, it says here, uh, scientists are in practically complete settlement that people are the precept function of worldwide warning, warming, worldwide warming. I think global warming is what they mean. Uh, however, polls show th- a third of most people disagree with this conclusion. Um uh, so essentially, they're they're saying that Americans have a predilection for fake science. In other words, they hear what they want to hear. Uh, Americans are vulnerable. That's to, true. That's I true. Agree. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Americans are vulnerable to superstition and paranormal beliefs. It says here in this article, an annual survey carried out by Technique of Sociologist at Chapman School finds that larger than half think about spirits in the lifetime of historic civilizations like Atlantis. And a th- larger than a third suppose that aliens have visited the Earth before now and are visiting now. Over 75% grasp multiple paranormal beliefs. The survey shows that these numbers have larger, are larger rather in current occasions. Uh, common belief in astrology is a pet peeve of uh, 
it says, my colleagues in astronomy, written by this particular author and not written well, uh, it's prolonged had a foothold it says in the popular custom through horse. Yeah, this is so poorly written it's making my head hurt trying to follow you on this sorry uh, it's not you you didn't write this it's just uh like i said it's not even poorly written i'm i can tell just by the fact that they're saying instead of global warming or warming worldwide this is just uh, somebody's translation of this original document mm-hmm. yeah um but essentially, uh, it's it's uh, saying that technology could come to the rescue uh, to help people educate themselves. Um, and it it brings, oh God, it's bringing my favorite uh, deal in here and having to do with AI detecting fake data points and strategies and detecting fake science online. Um, the only problem is, is you do have, uh, like Facebook right now is, is, is weeding out... Uh, is waiting. I, I hate to use the term fake news because we we throw fake news around quite a bit uh, as a misnomer. Um, but it is picking out um, uh, misinformation online right now, and it's it's tagging it and graying it out. I mean, it's kind of funny when you go to a friend's uh, any friend's Facebook page right now, and and they're posting, uh, even if they're doing it as a joke, if they're posting um, like a funny meme having to do with like <laughs> the one that that comes to mind when it comes to coronavirus for, for example uh like uh you can find coronavirus on toilet paper i know a lot of people are posting that as a joke not necessarily seriously but facebook was graying that out and saying this uh, this post contains uh inaccurate information uh, i know uh, a lot of social media now is taking to that and and doing it for you so um wow so yeah hey speaking it's of which there. Uh, did you hear that um, Chuck Norris uh, contracted coronavirus? He did? Yeah, coronavirus is now being quarantined for 14 days. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite coronavirus meme, Tim. That's pretty see, good. See, for those of you that don't understand, there was this thing like, uh, you know, Chuck Norris was re- recently bitten by a rattlesnake. It soon died afterwards. Meaning, like, he's so powerful that corona ended up quarantining itself after trying to inject itself into Chuck, Chuck Norris. Norris. Really, if I guess right. if I have to describe it, it's not that funny no, after all. But I do enjoy those little bits. I like it. Yep. All right. Where are we off to next, good sir? California is where we're Woo-hoo. going. Yep. A historic California building that has been a restaurant, a home, and a setting for ghost stories is on the market for just a measly three million bucks, Dave. Oh, that's all. Yeah. Bet in a few weeks we can get it cheaper. Uh, <laughs> probably. Too soon. Sorry. No, no, it's not. It's a, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice economic joke. Uh, actually, that's actually funnier than the Chuck Norris joke. Um, Stokes Adobe, which is my new porn name. Uh, a <laughs> Stokes Adobe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, mine is Stroker Ace. Well, so why not? <laughs> There you go. Stokes. I like that. Stokes Adobe, a uh, home and former restaurant in Monterey, California, is uh, back on the market. I just, I don't know. I I just saw the name and I thought, hey, that's a good porn name. Um, By the way, have you heard this? I I was watching a a late night program and they said that there's actually coronavirus porn on Pornhub. We are the world. We are the children. I know, right? Um, so Stokes Adobe, uh, the building is reportedly haunted and has been attached to ghost stories, uh, since the tragic deaths of its early owners. Uh, the building has been empty since 2017 and the sellers are asking for 3 million bucks. Hoopy doopy. Yeah. You can visit, visit uh, business insiders homepage, uh, for more stories on the building. A historic and possibly haunted landmark is on the market in Northern California. The Stokes Adobe in Monterey, California, was first built in 1833 as a single large room, and it's been expanded over the years uh, since. This according to San Francisco Gate, the San Francisco Treat, by the way. Uh, Local legends and stories say that James Stokes, who bought the property in 1837, had a life filled with tragedy in the house. Stokes' past is unclear, but some say he was a British sailor who left his post while others say he stole medical supplies and impersonated a doctor. Well, can you blame him? That's how you get the ladies. That's what I hear anyways. Uh, In 1844, Stokes expanded the house 
adding a second floor and several extra rooms. Uh, in 1855, his wife, uh, his wife Josepha, uh, died at uh, only 39 years old. Within a few years, their oldest son drowned. In 1864, James Stokes died by suicide. Despite the bad luck of its owners, the house was owned by several families until it became a restaurant in the 1950s, which saw Bob Hope, Frank Sinatra, and other celebrities as guests. More recently, the building was a restaurant 1833, an homage to the home's original construction date. Since the restaurant closed, the building has been empty for several years, and some past owners have said that Stokes haunts the building. Now 500 Hartnell Street is on the market, and asking $2.975 million, listed with Cicely Sterling at the agency. Uh, and there you go. You can actually take a look inside the historic building by going, uh, like we said, to that uh, that website. Um, cool. Yeah, at Business Insider. Stokes Agency, huh? Yeah. Or St- Stokes Adobe. Stokes Adobe. <laughs> that Stokes Adobe. You, you can uh, soon find me on different films by the name Stokes Adobe. I like it. Yeah. Stroker Ace Productions presents Stokes Adobe. <laughs> in uh, in uh, uh, in the house. Stokes Adobe in the house. Uh, Stokes Adobe takes over this house. I got a whole line of films that uh, wow. eventually you'll be able to find. Yeah, Nice. Mm-hmm. All right, sir. My good friend, we have more emails to attend to. Are you ready for this? We're ready. Okay. Tim, Dennis, my friend, here comes the next email. Okay. Hi, Dave. Thanks for a brilliant podcast, and thanks again for an interesting and enlightening description of your ayahuasca experience. I've been listening to you for years. I suffer from depression and self-esteem issues, etc., blah, blah, blah. He says that, not me. Just let me go on record. I'm not being dismissive. (laughs) Okay. Uh, You guys always cheer me up. I like that you are non-political. I think you guys have a massive positive effect on people. Props to Tim, too. Cheers. That comes from Pete. See, that's a much nicer message than the one we got from Hassam. Oh, thanks, Pete. Yeah, Pete, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. What do you think of that, Hassam? Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Wow. What? Well, he's nice to me. I know he was, but I'm just saying. Yeah. This guy thinks we're positive role models, Tim. The other guy just thinks I'm an asshole. Maybe <laughs> I'm a positive role model to assholes. Hmm. Nobody ever thinks about that interesting aspect, Tim. Maybe there does need to be a positive role model for assholes. And I, Dave Schrader, want to take up that mantle. Vote for me, Dave Schrader, 2020, the positive role model for assholes. How about inspiring assholes everywhere? Yes. Huh? Yes, obviously, because look what a great job I did for Hassam. Thank you, everybody. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Remember to tip your waiters and waitresses. All right, Tim. <laughs> Jeez. Hi, Dave and Tim. Just want to let you know you guys are awesome. I like this, Tim. I like the way these are starting off. There's <laughs> stuff you guys do during your shows that stick forever. Like chlamydia, Tim. Well, I don't know that that's... Like today, for example, here we are watching La La Lorna at home, and I have to stop the movie and mention that on one of your episodes, you guys were talking about the movie premiere, but the way Dave kept saying La La Lorna was funny. What's so funny about that? What, do I amuse you? What, am I a clown? La Llorona. That's what I said. La Llorona. La Llorona. Ah, the little things that make us laugh and smile. I love you guys. Sincerely, Al and Gabby. Hey, Al and Gabby. La Llorona. Yeah, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. La Llorona. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, while we're talking movies, Tim, how about if I throw this little nugget out there? Sure. So my girls tell me, Dad, which is what they call me. Oh, good. Dad. Dad, we want to watch a scary movie. We want to watch a good ghost movie. Yeah. So I filter through my DVD collection because we're staying home, Tim. Yep. We're going we're gonna to power through my 32,000 movies. Oh, God. And I pull out for them. I think kind of a lost classic, to be honest with you. Okay. I pulled out um, a Kevin Bacon movie, Tim. Do you know what Kevin Bacon paranormal movie I'm referring to? Footloose? No, Tim. Although an excellent guess. Okay. Not Footloose, Tim. Would you like to, to fathom a second guess? Flatliners? Oh, shit. I didn't even think of that one. Flatliners. I'm going to have to look that one up again. Was Kevin Bacon in Flatliners? I believe he was. But that wasn't, I don't remember that being an entirely great movie. I know Oliver, wasn't Oliver Platt, Julia Roberts, mm-hmm. uh, and a couple other people that I'm forgetting in that movie? Wasn't no, Amelia uh, Estevez in it, too? Maybe. Maybe. Stir of Echoes, Tim. Stir of Echoes. 
Oh. We watched that movie okay. last night. All right. Two nights ago, for those of you not time traveling with me. Um, so Stir of Echoes was the, my movie. I recommend it. If you have not seen it or it's been way too long since you've seen it, folks, revisit Stir of Echoes. It's a really well done and uh, a chilling little movie. I think you and your kids and, and friends and family will enjoy Stir of Echoes. And Tim, I'm getting old. Mm-hmm. So I can't remember if I mentioned this, but did I mention a movie that I saw that I really liked uh, last week called uh, Jojo Rabbit? Did I mention that on the show? I think you have mentioned Jojo Rabbit, but uh, recap for us, if you would. Folks, here's the deal. And this is one of the most bizarre reviews I'll ever give. If you grew up as a fan of Calvin and Hobbes, I think you're going to like Jojo Rabbit. Uh, in this movie, Jojo is your Calvin character only he's a little goose-stepping 10 year old nazi boy who wants to be uh, a full-fledged nazi <laughs> and his imaginary hobbs friend is adolf hitler who's ridiculous funny and one of my favorite parts of the movie which when did you ever think in history oh god hitler's my favorite part would ever be said out <laughs> no, loud never <laughs> it is so well written i understand why they won an academy award for this screenplay it is clever Fast moving, fun, interesting. But the whole concept is this little boy really, you know, it's right in the heat of World War II. His mom is played by Scarlett Johansson. So win right there, Tim. Yes. Yeah. Every person in this movie turns in a great role. Uh, Sam Rockwell is in it as this um, uh, kind of on his way out German commandant who is now because of, of an accident where he screwed up one of his eyes. He now has to train children to become Nazis. So he feels it's a very, you know, big step down for him. And he may be hiding kind of a flamboyant secret as well from the uh, Gestapo. But um, the mom has hidden in a, a uh, it's a time, time and true story, Tim, she hidden a Jewish girl up in her attic. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jojo, our little Nazi boy, finds her. And there's an interesting relationship that develops between them, this kid not trusting the Jews and wanting to write the perfect book about what Jews are. Because as uh, the commandant tells him, you know, yeah, boy, it's hard to tell them apart unless they're wearing those funny hats, right? So mm -hmm. it, it, you get the point that they're showing just how stupid the entire thing was. You, you can't even tell who the Jews were unless they were wearing an outfit that denoted they were Jewish, right? Right. Yeah. Hence the stars and such. But it's it's such a well-written movie, and it's clever. And uh, I think people are going to really enjoy it. So that's another good one. And it's at the box that's red, Tim, since they're not an advertiser. I, I guess I can't say it, uh, red box out loud, so I'll just refer to it as the box that's red. Sure, yeah. But it's also on uh, streaming, Tim, on Amazon and a few other places. Well worth the uh, well worth the watch and laugh. And I watched another movie, and I can't remember what it is. Maybe every day I'll pop on and do a little movie, movie review. I'll call it um, Upon Further Review. There what you do you go. think, yeah. Dave Schrader? Yeah, I like and I'll that. I'll pop on and tell you a movie to check out I like that, that. Uh, that I'm watching yeah. and enjoying. I like that. Uh, yeah. Kevin Bacon was in Flatliners. He played David Labracchio. Look at you, yeah. Mr. IMDB. I know, right? I'm quick with the phone. Actually, uh, you're you are TD, not DB. Also, uh, it was Kiefer Sutherland who was in uh, Kiefer. And then yeah. the blonde, who was she? The blonde. Not Mayor Winningham, but uh, she was in Phenomenon with, uh, with uh, uh, John Travolta, wasn't Hope, she? Hope Davis? No. Are you looking at the cast lineup there? I am, yeah. yeah. yeah who am I thinking of? The, the blonde... She she had her own show, The Closer, I think, for a while. TV show. I can't think of her name, damn it. Uh, she was in Phenomena. Do, 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 with John Travolta. Do, 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 do. She was in Phenomena. Do, 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 I'm not seeing who you're talking about here as I'm looking at the cast. Right. Let's see here. Sorry. Yeah, mistaking her. I, th I don't think she was in it. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, the other movie I just watched that I did enjoy, and I'm not ashamed to admit... Uh, brought me to tears twice. What's that? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Tom, Tom Hanks' portrayal of the beloved Fred Rogers. You're going to laugh at me when I say this. I have not what? watched it yet because I don't want to break down and cry. There, and you know what? You know what's really funny? One of the scenes is in the commercials. 
this Mr. Rogers gets on the subway and he's with this uh, magazine reporter from I want to say like Esquire, mm-hmm. and and he goes, "You're just gonna, I mean, you're Mr. Rogers. You're just gonna take the the subway." And he goes, "Well, it's, I'm just a stop away." And he gets in and sits down, and all of a sudden, all these people kind of turn and this. Uh, two little African American girls go, Mister Rogers, and he goes, Oh, hello! And then they start singing, "It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood," and everybody starts singing it to Mister Rogers, and he's just sitting there with this most pleasant smile on his face. Mm-hmm. And I'm on a plane on my way home from filming, and I sw- I'm sitting next to this young fella, maybe in his early twenties, right? I'm doing everything. I'm biting the inside of my cheek, everything I can, so that this is not the sound you hear coming next to you in an airplane. That sound you never really want to hear, period. Right. But especially on a plane in close quarters, because then you're like, oh, God, I'm going to have to ask this guy if he's okay. Right? This is the sound I'm stifling. (laughs) 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 It was so beautiful, a little scene. And then there's another little scene in the movie that just kind of makes me choke up. But now, well, you're at home, Tim. Watch it. Treat yourself. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a really, really, and it's not really just about Mr. Rogers. It's kind of about this this cynical um, magazine writer and his his world. How Mr. Rogers kind of opens his eyes again. It's it's pretty cool. I liked it. Uh, maybe you know I, yeah, I I might now that I'm home. I, Do I, it. I, I I I refuse to go see it in the theater because I didn't want people thinking I was a blubbering idiot. Um. But yeah, I, I I wanted to go to the screening. I didn't go to the screening because I, I thought people are just going to go see who's the big guy in the corner who's blubbering. Did they run out of popcorn? Um, <laughs> yeah, I I didn't want to. I didn't want that to happen. When, I will say this: I stifled my crying for Mister Rogers. Jojo Rabbit made me laugh out loud like three or four times mm-hmm. out loud on a plane, and I startled the girls in the row in front of me. <laughs> And it was one of those I couldn't, I just, something happened a few times that I just, and I'll be honest with you, it's Adolf Hitler's reactions to things that are going on <laughs> that made me laugh out loud. <laughs> and and I like literally burst into, <laughs> and these girls would jump. And then I'm like, oh, gee, sorry about that, you know? And then it would happen again. That's, and I love movies that are joyous like that. Well, that, that was the... Uh... That was a movie that was, is it Taika Waititi? Is that how you say his name? That, yeah, I that, believe so, right? Yeah, that, that wrote that movie? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah Takiti Waititi or something. I can't yeah, remember how to yeah. say it either, but it is a uh, great movie. Yeah. Well worth check it out. Yeah, he's very funny. Very funny. Let's uh, let's do this. Speaking of checking it out, let's uh, let's take a phone call. Okay. 651-300-4977. Let's hear your story. Hey guys, uh, this is Lee out in Orlando again. Just a, a quick message for Dave. Um, so Dave, I, uh, I just did a session with Michael and Marty Perry, and they were absolutely amazing. Um, and at the end of things, I just wanted to make sure I took a moment to let them know that, that you had mentioned them on the podcast a couple weeks ago and how, how great they were and how you'd always gotten just great reviews uh, about them. And I just wanted them to know that you, you know, had, had mentioned them and had, had, were trying to send business their direction. Uh, and Michael's like, oh, we love Dave. He's great. And he told me the story about how they met you on the, the Queen Mary. And, uh, then he told me a really funny story about, uh, John Wayne. <laughs> so he told me the John Wayne story, which is absolutely hysterical. Uh, and that, uh, they really hope, um, to be a television show with you at one point. And uh, we're, we're hoping that, you know, maybe uh, that you guys could do a show together and that when they saw you were doing the holes were files with, with Cindy, uh, like, oh, man, we really wish that could have been us. Um, and uh, and Etna had just a small note for you that uh, they were like, oh, well, just we just wish Dave would be, would be more himself on the show because, you know, we, we love Dave and we love his personality and. Uh, we felt like he was acting just a little bit on the show, and, and if he would just be more himself, gosh, it would be just so so good. Uh, but they, they love you, man. It's so so such great things to say about you. Uh, and we just we must talk about you for about ten minutes, dude. So at any rate, just want to let you know that it was great. They are awesome. They love you, and I made sure that they knew that you loved them. So have a good one, man. Bye. 
Excellent. Thank you. See how easy that was, folks? Call in, share your story beyond the voice, voice, beyond the voices, voices of the beyond voicemail. Something like that, Tim. Uh, Words is hard. I've created this thing. I can't even remember how to say it. Voices from beyond, Dave, but that's Yeah, that's voices fine. from beyond voicemail, 651-300-4977, 651-300-4977. That's the number you want to call and share your story. All right, Tim, how many more news stories do we have here? I think we have just uh, just a few. Okay, just let few. us launch into the next one. Where are we going now? We're going to North Kakalaki, Dave. At least that's how I heard it say said. I heard it said on wrestling. See, I, it? it's 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 deteriorating my brain as we speak. North Carolina, Dave, um, and I'm sitting in a le- leather chair that makes it sound like I'm farting in the background. I don't know. What, yeah, okay. I don't, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, Tim, I'm looking right at you. You're in a folding chair. What not, are you talking about? It's not gas. It's it's uh-huh. yeah. It's it's actually a full leather chair. Uh-huh. Uh, you can explore the supernatural at this free paranormal u- museum in North Carolina when everything opens again. Let's practice social distancing, kids. Uh, if you've ever been curious about the existence of aliens, yetis, or ghosts, I think it's yetai, yetai. That's the singular plural version. Um, you should prepare to be spooked. You can explore all things paranormal and mythical at this free museum in North Carolina. Countless oddities, artifacts, and cryptic paraphernalia can all be found at this peculiar spot. I've said more big words in that one paragraph than I have all day. What appears to you don't, you don't want to dislocate your vulva. I did already. Yeah. My I, I already disconnected my vulva. Actually, it's hanging on the wall right now. <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh, uvula, you, you, you Tim. Yeah. You, you love, well, yeah. I got it hanging there. I'm, I'm actually throwing darts at it right now. Ouch. Well, you know. Uh, what appears to be an average white plantation home in Littleton, North Carolina, actually houses cryptozoology and paranormal museum, a bizarre collection of mysterious memorabilia and theoretic creatures from the past and present. The uh, museum, which opened in 2015, is dedicated to the study and display of creatures and phenomena. Do, 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 do. Phenomena. Do, 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 do. Come on, Tim. Phenomena. Yeah, I like when you let loose and let your hair down, son. All right, continue. What hair? The nose hair and ear hair that we both sport. Oh, there's that, yeah. What we lack in hair on our head, we definitely make up for in hair from our noses and ears at this age, Tim. That is true. Yep. When you spend more time trimming the uh, accoutrement, <laughs> then... That's, uh, a, that's, why I don't ride in a, that's why I don't ride in a convertible at the top down anymore, Tim. The hair from my nose flaps around and tickles my ears. The ear hair flaps back and tickles my neck. It's just irritating. I can't drive properly. That's true. That's that's why I roll with all the windows up. Uh, the museum, which opened in 2015, is dedicated to the study and display of creatures and fa, uh, not recognized by traditional science, according to the official website. Uh, enter this mystical mayhem at your own risk, because the items on display there and here could convince you that what you may have previously deemed fantasy may actually exist. The museum is completely free to visit, and you can discover tons of otherworldly proof uh, provided by founder and collector Stephen Barcello. Uh, You may feel chills run up your spine as you discover haunted dolls, Sasquatch prints, UFO sighting testimonials and evidence, ghost hunting equipment, local cryptid and ghost stories, Fiji mermaids, and more. (gasps) Dave, I've always wanted to date a Fiji mermaid. Okay. Well, you know, it's it's simple. Oh, you it, know, it's just a monkey, uh, the top of a monkey sewn onto the bottom of a fish, right? It is? I thought they were they were like kind of like bougie mermaids that you put in Fiji water. Bougie mermaids. They're not? Uh, squirrels are nothing more than bougie rats. You do know that, right? What are? Squirrels. They're just bougie rats with their puffy tails. Fancy. They're like city folk. Did I ever tell you that my great-grandmother had a squirrel for a pet? That's funny because my grandfather had a squirrel for a pet. Really? Yeah. What was what was your uh, what was your grandfather's uh, squirrel pet name? 
I don't know. He just uh, he would always go outside, and he'd be out cleaning the horses' stables and stuff, and mm-hmm. he'd walk into the back room and put his arm out, and the little flying squirrel would launch itself onto his arm and <gasps> climb around on him while he was out cleaning the horses' stables. Animals loved him. He was like a living Dr. Doolittle. It was a flying squirrel? As opposed to a dead Dr. Doolittle. Who, well, yeah. <laughs> not, animals that. are only attracted to him for a food source. But, uh, yeah, he was like a, a true... Living, breathing, Dr. Doolittle. Horses, animals, just love. They would come out of nowhere to this guy. He could, and, and he had his fish trained in his pond because he would come down every morning at the same time and he would bring like a, a quarter a loaf of bread and feed his fish. And they would all be up at the, it was the most amazing thing you'd ever see, dude. They would all be at the bank's edge waiting for him really? in the morning. He'd toss toss them bread and they'd eat the bread and then swim off and he would just sit there and feed them and that that's what they turtles and fish living together in sin while my grandfather fed them tim one of the most miraculous things i ever saw as a 10 year old um we went over it was my my grandpa dennis's mother uh, grandma stephanie she was married like four times so we never knew what to call her last name wise um so we go over to her house in robbinsdale and uh she goes uh you want to see a trick I'm like, I guess, sure. Um, so she grabs a sleeve of Ritz crackers. The squirrel ate really well. Um, she grabs a sleeve of Ritz crackers, goes out to the front stoop, and uh, it's a, the middle of summer, So all the and, and it's the weekend, so all the rel- relatives, all the neighbors are out, and they're mowing their lawns, and they're playing out on the front, you know, front yards and everything. And uh, Grandma Stephanie had a lower voice, and she was very, she could be very loud when she wanted to be. And she gets out on the front front step and goes, "Here, stupid, 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 stupid!" And everybody stops, <laughs> turns, and looks at my grand great grandmother. And down from this big old tree comes this squirrel, <laughs> running down the tree, runs up the the sidewalk, stops in front of my great grandmother, chatters at her, and she takes a, a just one one uh, cracker like a communion wafer. Hands it to the to the squirrel. The squirrel sits and eats it in front of her, chatters at her again, and then turns and runs back up the tree. He said, thank you, goofball. Well, I guess he said, thank you. I don't speak squirrel. I happen so, to speak squirrel. Yep. So, People have said I speak squirrel for years because I'm nuts. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here all week. So then I was like, whoa. And she goes, well, here, you could do it too. And I'm like, I have this power. I thought, this is weird. So I was, I was like, I'm going to try it. So I, too, am going to embarrass myself in front of the neighbors. And I go, here, stupid, 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 stupid. And here comes the squirrel. And I was like, whoa. And I hand him the, uh, and I was very scared to hand him the cracker because I didn't want him to scratch me and give me some sort of weird squirrel fever or whatever it is they, they transmit. Fever. So I love that movie in the eighties. I, I know it was the sequel to Staying Alive, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. 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 It, it, it was. Uh, it was uh, Travolta's brother who, who starred yeah. in that. Yeah. Squirrel uh, fever. Squirrel fever. <laughs> so I, I hand him the the cracker. He sits and he eats it, and then he thanks me. And then boom, right back up the tree. And I was like, whoa, this is the most magical place I'll ever be. That's amazing. Yeah. Pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Funny though that there's only one squirrel named Stupid. I've I've met a lot of stupid squirrels in my life. Only one you call by name, I guess. I guess. I don't know. All right. Um, so uh, this uh, this museum in North Carolina, uh, one of the biggest attractions you'll find is Bigfoot himself in the form of a burly statue that makes for a popular photo op. There's also a face and a hole cut out so you can channel your inner yeti there's that as well uh if you're in tune with the uh, paranormal and or cryptic creatures or and you've uh, spotted one you can actually report your sighting uh on their website for even more creepy adventures you can check out local ghost tours on their website as well if you catch yourself in the historic small town in halifax north carolina you can drop by for some frightful fun between 1 and 7 p.m if they're still open with all this stuff going on they are at 328 Mosby Avenue in Littleton, North Carolina. They're free. You probably want to give it some time, though, with all the stuff going on. Um, it is the Cryptozoology and Paranormal Museum there. Very cool. Shall we delve into another email, Tim? Sure. Hi, Dave and Tim. Hi. I'm an armchair paranormal investigator. Well. 
it's got to be very limiting when you can only investigate one armchair, but whatever, yeah. I'm not here to judge. Sure. I have no experience in investigating the paranormal, but I watched all the shows and listened to a lot of paranormal programs, so I must be an expert, right? Sure. Anyway, I had a few theories that I'd like to run past you. Oh, Tim, I like theories. They're all valid. Yeah. Yep. Today's theories is brought to you by Dave Schrader, defense attorney at law. We're <laughs> here to listen to you. Be sure to come by for 20% off chicken noodle soup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First, I'm fascinated by EVPs, and that is always my favorite type of evidence. It is always a little disturbing to hear children's voices. But I wondered if it could just be an immature ghost. The way our voices change as we age, maybe older ghosts can sound more like adult-like, while new ghosts haven't quite figured out how to sound like their living selves. So they come across in recordings as younger voices. I want some of what she's smoking, Tim. Dude, that's stronger than they give you the medical stuff here in the state. I mean, that's I, definitely something to think about, Liz. Uh, I don't know. It's a theory. It's no more absurd than any other theory, I guess. Sure. Second, it seems to me, again, my experience is limited to TV, radio, and podcasts, that a lot of ghosts are from the turn of the century or Civil War era. I wonder if this is a result of the spiritualist movement of that time. People constantly trying to connect with loved ones. Maybe they were successful, but the ghosts couldn't figure out a way to get back to where they came from, or the living didn't know that they had to release the dead. Holy shit. Now that makes sense to me. That does make sense. Yeah. Think about it. That whole spiritualist movement in the 1800s through the early 1900s, all the seances calling forth spirits. <gasps> what if that is what populated the dead? I'm using that on an upcoming episode of The Holzer Files, Liz. And I'm going to take it as though I said it first. So, yep. Tim, erase all this audio. No, Liz, I kid. I, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to have Tim erase the audio. But no. uh, but uh, that is that's really Really a great theory. Holy cow. I love that theory. As a matter of fact, I'm going to flag it. I said flag it. Oh, Tim, flag it. In my emails because I'm going to talk about that uh, later this week. Um, maybe online. That's a fascinating, fascinating point. Seriously, and I'm not kidding you. That is really. I, what do you think of that, Tim? I give. Hold, first of all, Liz, I just gave you the clap because that's how impressed I am. Wow. He doesn't give the clap to very many people. Not anymore. I don't. Nope. Um, I, I, I'm I, shocked. I'm stunned. I, I, it's a, it's it a makes very good a, unbelievable sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would yeah. you like to give her the clap as well? Uh, you've already given her the clap. I don't want to share the clap amongst too many people. I mean, we might start another pandemic. Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm well, Tim won't do it. I will. I'm for speechless. You. I'm speechless. I'm giving you the clap twice because I think yeah. you deserve it. Um, that's awesome. Lastly, I have a question about the Holzer files. Tim, do you want to answer this for her? Sure. Why not? I mean, I'm on set all the time. Yeah, I love it, by the way. In the <laughs> countless hours of audio and video, did Hans Holzer capture any EVPs or unusual images? If so, does that give that investigation priority in terms of being reopened? Would that evidence ever make it to an episode? You guys are awesome. Love the show, Liz. Well, do you mind if I answer this one, Tim? I'll go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah we, we, I don't know if he's caught EVP. We're actually digitizing all of the audio and, and trying to save all of these recordings, which are slowly reduced to dust, right? So we are listening through for any EVP he may have inadvertently caught. He did capture some photos. Uh, what what really makes them a priority is finding places that are still willing to let their story be told or that are still haunted. Hans Holzer made it his life's um, work to try to help release these spirits. And in many of the places that we've called, they tell us that since Hans Holzer's visit, they've had no experiences. So we can't reopen them all. But the ones where there is some kind of ongoing activity or something has changed, those are the ones that we're looking into. Those are the priority cases. So we will be sharing evidence and sharing cool stories and uh, looking for new ways to tell stories. So just, you know, be aware that that will be coming as well. So uh, we've got a lot of cool irons in the fire. But Liz, thank you. And again, wow, kudos to you on that theory. 
Yeah. I, I can honestly say I don't remember ever hearing that theory before. No, I don't. I don't remember hearing it either. It's been a long time too. Tick, 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 boom! Mind blown, Liz. Mind blown, and I'm being serious. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's coming from an arrogant, self-centered, conceited asshole. No, the whole ass. Remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah. the whole ass. Yeah. So that tells yeah. you something. Yeah. If I'm on your side, wow. Hmm. Hey, Dave, you probably have tons of emails about this. I do. Add me to the list. I have. It's time for a whopper of an experiment. Intention versus coronavirus. Love the show. Thanks, Dave. That comes from C. Lou. C, rewind the show, baby. It's there. We done did it. Let's keep pushing it forward. Share this episode, at least the beginning of this episode. Get as many people as you can to listen to this episode, because if we could broaden our reach, not just the couple hundred thousand people that listen to this program through uh, our many uh, ways that we make it available, but if you can share it and get it out there to people, I think that the more voices we can bring together, the more thought and intention we can bring, we can see miracles. All right, Tim, I've got one more email to do, but first, what's our next news story? A triangular triangular <laughs> UFO was uh, filmed hovering above Chicago in its third U.S. sighting this year. The witness claimed the craft was government-based, uh, U.S. government-based, that is, and that there is a reason for the lack of reports about it. A triangle-shaped UFO has been spotted hovering in the skies above the U.S. city of Chicago in the third sighting this year. Uh, the footage shows a camera panning from some high-rise buildings into the cloudy nighttime sky. There appears to be a formation of lights in a triangle shape hovering in the same place. Two women behind the camera can be heard trying to work out what they are with one suggestion that they could just be lights being beamed into the sky. But her friend dismisses that explanation, saying there are no events going on that would mean that it's a reflection of lights. The video was shared by UFO conspiracy theorist Tales from Out There yesterday. Uh, the witness later explained she and her friend both thought the object was a plane at first, uh, but this soon changed. We then noticed something even stranger, the onlooker said. It wasn't actually stationary, but appeared to be moving horizontally f of the direction a plane would normally move. Uh, while a plane moves along the nose and tail, this was moving from what appeared to be a wing, uh, but it was very jarring as it was quiet that night due to the spreading of COVID-19. I personally don't believe this was extra extraterrestrial, but government-based. I haven't been able to find other reports on it, and I think there's a reason for that. The sighting comes after similar crafts were recorded in Texas since the start of the year. But viewers were split over the latest video. Some believe the UFO was proof of a government conspiracy. One wrote, this is why they want people to stay inside their homes. It's not just the coronavirus. We have been having more sightings in the past few weeks than ever. Pay attention, people, was another quote that was put on the video. Another was more skeptical, though, suggesting it was nothing more but lights from spotlights on the clouds. So there you go. All right. Do we have any more stories? Uh, I believe so. We have another one here that uh, actually we have a couple of Bigfoot stories here. Okay. Uh, you know, the meme is going around, Dave, that Bigfoot is the biggest social distancer out there. Evidently not uh, because he's made a couple of appearances since everybody's gone inside. Bigfoot mm -hmm. was filmed by Dash Cam in Canada. Uh <laughs> An oil field worker in Canada believes that the dash cam on his truck may have inadvertently captured a brief glimpse of a Bigfoot lurking by the side of the road. Why was he there, Dave? He was there just to get to the other side. There, I made the joke. Uh, the intriguing moment was filmed uh, on March 12th, around th 30 miles east of the Banff Park boundary uh, near Alberta. According to the witness, they did not notice anything out of the ordinary at the time and only spotted the potential Sasquatch when later reviewing the dash cam footage. In the video, the man's truck sits idle in some snowy weather as he checks on some equipment, and then he begins driving down the road. And just a few seconds later, he passes what appears to be a noticeably large and dark mass standing out among the trees on the side of the road. Alas, since he didn't realize what was happening at the time, the man just kept on driving and so this is all that was filmed by the dash cam. 
To his credit, the worker says that he did return to the area the next day in an attempt to see if he could find the evidence of the creature he believes was caught on film. In that video, the would-be Bigfoot hunter discovers a sizable number of branches seemingly piled up in the snow near where the creature was seen. Upon closer inspection, the man also finds some hair in and around the pile of branches. Based on what his dash cam filmed as well as the strange stick pile and odd hair that he subsequently found, the man is understandably convinced that there was a Bigfoot on the side of the road and when he passed through the area. Uh, skeptical viewers, however, may point to what appears to be the accumulation of snow atop the purported Bigfoot and wonder if perhaps that is an indication that it was just a natural formation and not a large bipedal creature roaming through the forest. That's your first story having to do with Bigfoot. The okay. second story, we go to Colorado for that one. Bigfoot was photographed peering through a window in Colorado. Yeah, this photograph, these photographs are pretty weird. I got to be honest with you. I don't know what they're doing or if they were fake, but they are pretty interesting and weird. Yeah, this one is a little creepy if you, if you take a look at it. A remarkable series of photographs taken by a man in Colorado may show a Bigfoot peering into a window. The highly intriguing images were captured back in October of 2017 uh, by Scott Yeoman who shared them with the public for the first time this past weekend on Facebook. According to him, the incident occurred one evening as he and his wife were refurbishing a mobile home on their 11-acre property uh, in the community of Bailey. Suddenly, the couple were caught off guard by a very harsh odor, which Yeoman said smelled like rotting animal flesh, vomit, and excrement. Oh, how wonderful. That's a great uh, great little cologne that Bigfoot has going there. World's worst potpourri. That's right. Uh, it was then that he noticed something moving outside the window from the corner of my eye, he says in quotes. Uh, since the ledge of the window was approximately seven to eight feet tall, Yeoman initially suspected that the proverbial visitor was a bear trying to look into the mobile home. However, when he caught sight of the creature's face as it moved closer to the window, Yeoman was struck by how, unlike a bear, its eyes were very large and far apart. Upon the realization that the thing was outside his window and was not a bear, he recalled, Fear struck me hardcore. He then quickly reached for a camera nearby and snapped a series of pictures. Strangely, Yeoman said, the creature closed its eyes when he first pointed the camera at it. The bewildered witness mused that it was akin to a child acting as if, you can't see me if my eyes are closed. Oh, that's cute. Uh, about eight minutes into the encounter, Yeoman wrote, his wife came into the room and he told her what was happening. When he saw the creature, she screamed and ran back into a back bedroom in the in the home, uh, defend or determined to defend themselves, Yeoman grabbed a gun from the closet. However, the creature was moving away from the window by the time he returned. Since it had not tried to get inside the home, Yeoman opted to not shoot at it, and the creature ultimately left the scene in a peaceful fashion. Unfortunately, this case could have been all the more fantastic, as Yeoman said that he actually filmed the creature peering in the window for about ten minutes. However, a house fire later destroyed the computer that contained the video. According to Yeoman, he occasionally sees signs uh, such as... So bro Bigfoot is an arsonist? Is that what he's trying to say? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Bigfoot was like, uh, you're not getting evidence of this. Whoosh. Um, uh, occasionally, Yeoman does see signs such as broken tree limbs and eye shine in the nearby wilderness. That seems to suggest that the creature is still lurking around the property but the couple have not had any other close encounters with the creature. Uh, while it is undoubtedly disappointing that Yeoman's footage is seemingly lost forever, the photos from that evening are unquestionably thought-provoking, uh, thought and if they really do show Sasquatch, maybe some of the best photos of the creature ever taken, that said skeptics will likely say that Bigfoot is either a bear or a product of a clever hoax involving a gorilla suit. I I'll tell you, Dave, I... I see that picture. That does not look like somebody in a gorilla suit. Those no, eyes, I didn't think so either. Yeah, those eyes go from corner to corner. Uh, those eyes, do 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 do. Yeah, that that uh, I have a night. That looks like an actual gorilla. That 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 uh, that's amazing. I'll tell you that. Um. That's kind of creepy looking. Um, all right, listen, I know we've got one more story. Yep. 
Well, actually, two more stories, but let's do this. Yep. Tim, Tim has a hard time counting. There are two more stories. We're going to break it up, though, with uh, another email okay. story, and then we'll wrap up with our final two stories. You're going to want to hear about this bone discoveries coming up from Tim, and the mistress of John Lennon speaks out about the UFO encounter. That's coming up in just a few seconds. But first, hi, Dave and Tim. Hi. Hi, Joe. I have two short stories about my grandfather, who was like a second father to me. He passed away in 2012. We're sorry to hear that, Joe. I have to say that I truly believe he saved my life, not once, but twice. I'll preface the first story by saying that I kept the mass card given out at his funeral in the visor of my car. Back in 2015, I was driving to work and got distracted by something. I looked down for what seemed like only a second. Suddenly, I felt something hit the top of my head. I looked up just in time to see a garbage truck had come into my lane of traffic and was barreling directly towards me, head on. I had just enough time to swerve out of the way. I pulled over to calm myself down and saw that this mass card was sitting on the passenger seat face up. It still gives me chills to this day. The second time he saved my life was just two days ago. I've recently developed an upper respiratory infection with a fever. Nope, not corona. Two nights ago was the worst. I was in a different state for work, so I was in my hotel room tossing and turning. I had the chills, and I was coughing badly, so I couldn't find a comfortable position. I finally fell asleep on my back. I had a dream that my grandfather was sitting on the chair next to the bed. He looked incredibly vibrant, almost glowing. He turned to me, stretched out his hand, and said, Do you want to come with me? I responded, No. No, it's too soon. He then said, okay, then you have to wake up now. He snapped his fingers in my dream and I was suddenly thrust into the waking world. I coughed up all sorts of nastiness and was gasping for air. I truly believe that had there not been some sort of intervention, someone would have found me dead in my hotel bed. I've been listening for years and just wanted to thank you both for your incredible content you two put out weekly. Keep up the amazing work. Much love. That comes from Joe. Thank you, Joe. What an amazing set of stories. Yeah, yeah, I have no doubt your grandpa's watching out for you, man. Congratulations. And thank you for your kind words and support of this self-centered, egotistical, arrogant asshole and his buddy who's <laughs> humble and lovable, Tim. All right, Tim, what's our next news story? <laughs> I'm glad you weren't affected by that at all. You just shook that right not, off. And, I, and I really moving. don't care. I could care less. I, I get so much, <laughs> we get so much love on this show. And I'm totally down with the fact that not everybody's going to love me. I'm okay with that, especially mm-hmm. after that ayahuasca journey, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't need the world to love me anymore. And actually, I find it humorous and fun. And that's what I'm trying to do is bring some <laughs> smiles to people right now. And uh, I, I wish that guy nothing but the best. And I hope he finds a show that he can enjoy or that he continues to listen to this sh- show and enjoy just what an asshole I really am. Because uh, either way, it's a win-win for all of us. So uh, I, I really am not taking it personally. I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> now, could you just read the next story, please? I will. I will. I'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> We're going. I'm just watching Mr. Rogers in the background, Tim. That's I know. Why I'm I crying, know. It's, okay? it's, just, it's that scene it's with the kids, and they're singing to him. What a beautiful day. They're singing, "You're such an asshole in the neighborhood, Mr. Rogers. You're such an asshole." Um. Anyway, yeah, I know. It just it hits home. Um. <laughs> Let's go on, Dave, to talk about some bone circles, uh, which, by the way... um, We put the kids away for this story? uh, No, no, no. (laughs) This Yes, this has to do about my uh, new porn career as well. Yes. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Mysterious bone circles are are made from the remains of mammoths and are revealing clues about uh, the Ice Age. This is just about uh, horny archaeologists, I believe. Is Gates involved in this deal? Wow. I'm just. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we're get, we're getting them on the show soon, so we'll ask. <laughs> are you one of the horny archaeologists that are a part of this? I guess so, huh? Uh-huh. Uh, mysterious bone circles made from the remains of dozens of mammoths have revealed clues about how ancient communities survived Europe's ice age. About seventy of these structures are known to exist in Ukraine and the West Russian Plain. You know, the main and the Russian Plain falls mainly in Spain. I don't know if that's that that's what I've been told. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and the wind is in the buffalo. That's true. Yeah. Uh-huh. The streetcar goes up the hill. <laughs> Those people that need that message, they understand exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. 
A uh, new analysis shows the bones at one site are more than 20,000 years old, making it the oldest such circular structure built by humans discovered in the region. Uh, the bones were likely sourced from animal graveyards, and the circle was then hidden by sediment and is now a foot below current surface level. The majority of the bones found at the site investigated in the Russian plains are from mammoths. A total of 51 lower jaws and 64 individual mammoth skulls were used to construct the walls of the 30-foot by 30-foot structure and scattered across its interior. Small numbers of reindeer, horse, bear, wolf, red fox, and red fox was used for this. Holy cow. Shut up, you dummy. (laughs) And Arctic fox bones were also found. Poor Lamont, he's he's probably just beside himself with this deal. Uh, Archaeologists from the University of Exeter uh, have also found for the first time the remains of charred wood and other soft non-woody plant remains within the circular structure situated just outside the modern village of Kostanky, uh about... <laughs> Kostanky. I've had a couple of days like that when I haven't showered where I'm really Kostanky. Well, I mean, we all have self-isolation. Um, about 500 kilometers south of Moscow, uh, this shows people who were burning wood as well as bones for fuel. And the communities who lived there had learned where to forage for edible plants during the Ice Age. The plants could also have been used for poisons, medicine, string, or fabric. More than 50 small charred seeds were also found. The remains of plants grown locally or possibly food remains from cooking and eating. Dr. Alexander Pryor, who led the study, said Kostanky 11 remains, or represents rather a rare example of Paleolithic hunter-gatherers living on in this harsh environment. Uh, what might have brought ancient hunter-gatherers to this site? The question is asked. One possibility is that mammoths and humans could have come to this area en masse because it had a natural spring that would have provided unfrozen liquid water throughout the winter, rare in this period of extreme cold. These finds shed new light on the purpose of these mysterious sites. Archaeology is showing us more about how our ancestors survived in this desperately cold and hostile environment at the climax of the last ice age. Most other places at similar latitudes in Europe had been abandoned by this time, but these groups had managed to adapt to find food, shelter, and water. The last ice age, which swept northern Europe about uh, 75 to 18,000 years ago, reached its coldest and most severe stage at around 23 to 18,000 years ago, just as the site at Kostenki uh, 11 was being built. Climate reconstructions indicate at the su- at the time summers were short and cool and or summers were short and cool and winters were long and cold with temperatures around minus 20 degrees Celsius or colder. Most communities like Minnesota, like Minnesota. Yeah. Summers, long winters, negative 20 sounds about like home to me. That's right. That's state fair weather. Uh, most communities left the region uh, likely because of lack of prey to hunt and plant resources. They depended upon for survival. Eventually the bone circles were also abandoned as the climate continued to get colder and more inhospitable. Previously, archaeologists have assumed that the circular mammoth bone structures were used as dwellings occupied for many months at a time. The new study suggests this might not have always been the case, as intensity of activity at Kostanki 11 appears to be less than what would have been expected uh, from a long-term base camp site. So there you go. All right, our final news story and one last email. Tim, what is our final news story? Final news story, Dave, has to do with John Lennon. Uh, The Beatles star's ex reveals the truth about his famous UFO sighting. She says, I know what I saw. Uh, John Lennon's wife, avant-garde artist and singer-songwriter Yoko Ono, had to wait decades to receive a writing credit on his biggest solo hit, Imagine. In a newly unearthed interview, the Beatles star's widow uh, has revealed her side of the story. John Lennon remains one of Britain's most acclaimed musicians to this day, thanks to his contributions both with the Beatles and as a solo artist. Famously shunning the mainstream for the experimental after meeting and falling in love with avant-garde artist Yoko Ono, he went on to leave the band and also tuned his attention, or turned his attention to uh, peace activism. A few short years into his marriage to Ono, however, Lennon embarked on a romance with their assistant May Pang. Ono knew about the affair 
uh, during which her famous husband moved out of their New York home and to Los Angeles with Pang, uh, later saying it wasn't hurtful to her. While he was with Pang at a time they were in New York, the Beatles star claimed to have seen a UFO, even referencing the moment in the liner notes for Walls and Bridges and in his song Nobody Told Me, in which he sings, There's UFOs over New York and I ain't too surprised. In a rare interview with the Beatles' Bible years later in 2011, Pang opened up about the experience, revealing what she thought to be the truth on the matter. Uh, I know what I saw, and the rational explanation is it was a UFO, she declared. There's UFOs over New York, as the song goes, and I saw another one in the early 80s, and I know other people did too. Asked if anyone else in the city spotted the object that day in 1974, Lennon's ex replied, Yes, that event had about 400 reported sightings, I believe. On the subject of whether or not Lennon had, in fact, called out to the UFO in the hope that it might take him away, Pang clarified, he didn't call out to it. He later said he wished it had taken us with it. Uh, However, I doubt we'd have been that enthusiastic to go along had the opportunity actually presented itself, she commented. In 1974, Lennon detailed the sighting in an interview with Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, describing a thing with ordinary electric light bulbs flashing on and off around the bottom, uh, one non-blinking red light on top. The Beatles star amid, uh, admitted uh, he had been gazing out the window, just daydreaming around in my usual poetic frame of mind when he saw what he claimed was a UFO, The object, he said, was hovering around 100 feet away over a nearby building. At the time, Peng said she had walked out onto the terrace and had seen the object, too. Uh, My eye caught this large circular object coming towards us, she said. It was shaped like a flattened cone, and on top was a large, brilliant red light, not pulsating as on any of the aircraft we'd seen heading for a landing at Newark Airport. When it came a little closer, we could make out a row or circle of white lines that ran around the entire rim of the craft. These were also flashing on and off, she continued. There were also many of these lights that it was dazzling to the mind. Although the incident occurred during Lennon's lost weekend, he swore he was very straight at the time. Lennon told the magazine that he had tried to take pictures of the UFO with both a Polaroid and a regular camera, but claimed... The film had come back blank, looking like it had been through the radar at customs. He said his photographer, Bob Gruen, had rung the Daily News and the Times the next day, as well as the police, to see if anyone else had reported a sighting. Two other people and or groups said they too had saw something. Uh, He said, anyway, I know what I saw, is what the final quote was from May Pang. So there you go. Very cool. All right, our final email, Tim. Mm-hmm. So I work at a hotel, one I love working for. That's how this email starts. Okay. While I was working, I heard someone in the hall singing, do, 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 do. <laughs> I had to look to see who was doing it. Turns out it was a little girl, no older than eight years old, leaving her room. I realized she was probably not mimicking it from your show and more likely the Muppets, but it made me laugh to myself. If anyone tells you and Tim to stop with the phenomena, just know it makes so many of us happy, including me. FYI, my husband said you did a Bill Curtis voice doing it. Now, damn it, I want to hear that. (laughs) Thanks for keeping the levity going despite the topics you cover. That comes from Janet. Well, damn it, Janet, we love you. And thank you for uh, listening to the show and letting us be a little light in the uh, storm for you. That's my new saying, by the way, be the lighthouse, not the storm. And so many people right now are just watching the darkness and instead be the beacon of light that helps others find their way out of the darkness, folks. There's plenty of people and, and it's very easy to go to those dark places. Don't do it. Lift yourselves up. Find something to make you laugh and entertain you, even in the face of some scary times. All right. We, we did the prayer and healing intention at the beginning of this episode and and may the universe and God hear our cries and our pleas and, and bring unto us a healing. But again, 
don't forget, this is an important time in our history, a time that we're being given a gift as well, a gift to get back to our humanity, get back to ourselves as a family and our own little community. Instead of stretching out beyond the parameters of where you are and looking for solace elsewhere, turn back to your friends and family, turn back to the people that mean the most to you and start to pay attention to them. Because there's so much to be learned, so much to be loved, so many memories that can start being created right now. And I'll say it again. If you're alone at this time and feeling alone and isolated and you just need somebody to talk to for a few minutes, email me, Dave at darknessradio.com and email me your phone number, what time zone you're in, and I'm going to do my best to give you a call I don't have an overseas plan, I apologize, but if you're in Canada or the United States, I will try to give you a few-minute call just to uh, be somebody there for you to talk to, all right? So email me, Dave, at darknessradio.com, and email me your phone number. I will do my best to get through to everybody I possibly can. I do have time that I need to spend with my family, but I will try to work in a few calls as often as I can. And you can also email Tim at tim at darknessradio.com. If you just need somebody to communicate with by email, you can hit either one of us up, or if you uh, want me to call you, shoot me your phone number. I'm sorry, that's all I have to offer at this time. I don't have extra food or toilet paper to send to you. I don't have extra things, but I do have myself and, and a pair of ears that are willing to listen and communicate with you. So feel free to, uh, to email me, daviddarknessradio.com, with the phone number, and I will reach out to you. All right, my friends, be safe, be kind, love one another. Tomorrow we're back. And, Tim, we've got an interesting show tomorrow, a follow-up, if you will. We have uh, a guest who is with us on True Crime Tuesday, Troy Taylor, one of our favorite guests, returned and told uh, some really cool stories about disappearances and famous mysteries. And he is back And we're going to be talking with him this uh, Sunday. And we're talking with him about another one of his books. And uh, it's really a cool story. The book is called Dance, uh, A Song of Dance and Death, Magic, Murder, Mayhem, and the Diabolical Notes of the Devil's Music. Troy Taylor, our guest, will offer up a strange array of, of frightening tales from the annals of American music, from the tragic deaths of rock icons to curses, murders, and brushes with the supernatural. He'll guide us into this way that the occult, magic, and the paranormal have always shaped the history of rock and roll and the part that they've all played in this popularity. We'll uncover some of rock and roll's most horrific murders and infamous and little-known twists of fate, like the Buddy Holly curse, the curse of the Grand Old Opry,